Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another new episode of the Forgotten Podcast. I'm your host Catman Joe and we're here joined once again by the man himself, the mystic man, Mr. Masonic. That was a one take. That was a one take. That was that, a one that take. Was, that was amazing. That, Damn, proud of you. For this week's episode of the show, we have a long-awaited friend coming on. This is an episode all three of us have been wanting to record since November last year. For episode 26, we are joined by a man who honestly needs no introduction. He's a long-time streamer and content creator who is almost in his seventh year of content creation on the platform and has gave over 3,400 subscribers and well over 200,000 views. Introducing The Shed himself, Mr. Shedwards. <laughs> it just One day. <laughs> <laughs> GG man, GG bro. Welcome to the show, Shed. My God, that was an actual struggle to get through that beginning part. Honestly, um, for anybody watching right now, Lawless. that on, that only took one take. Shed and I and Joseph, we will keep this. We'll take this to the grave. That only took one take. You might see in the bloopers some actual extra takes. It's all the different cameras. Thank you, Joseph. I'm frozen. A long-awaited guest coming on the show. I just fucked up the intro. God dang, let me try again. See, that was your not fault. Just, uh, it's not a one take. You fucked me up, man. You said you like it's because you said it's a one take. How you all doing, though, folks? Welcome to the show. This is episode twenty six, like Joseph just quickly right there just said. And Shed, thank you for coming on the show, man. It is a pleasure to have you, bro. Um, I want to just begin by just saying this is actually our first episode where all three, the guests and the hosts, have got face cams, which is actually a big achievement on itself. And um, by the time this episode goes out, there'll only be a week till Christmas, which is pretty dang festive. I gotta ask, who's excited for Christmas? Anybody? I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> are you are not, you going to be entirely. Scrooge? Really? Not I entirely. Think we should... Well, yes and no. I'm, the thing is, this Christmas is a bit different for me because I'm actually going to be spending it with um, over at Lucy's. I'm not going to be with my oh. family. Uh, yeah. So it's it, it's interesting. I'm excited for that, that aspect of it. But Christmas itself, mm, on and off. What about you, Shed? Yeah, I'm quite excited. I mean, I do the same thing. So I go around the girlfriends like Christmas Eve and that's when mm. Christmas at home. So... That's not yeah. too bad. I think once you, I think once you get past like sixteen, like you kind of go like, oh man, Christmas. Like you kind of like that Christmas kind of vibe kind of goes away. I think, I think like, the magic kind of gets ruined. It's like, yeah, you know, I kind of yeah, miss that when you're a kid. There might be some people watching that still don't know, but you know. Yeah. I remember being so excited, you know, when you get your PS3 or your PS4 or. Oh. But Dude, I remember receiving it. my first ever console, my, like my own owned console that isn't a DS. It was the. Uh, I remember getting the PS3 with. I know this is going to sound weird to you guys because, like, I'm obviously a different generation. But yeah. um, I got. I remember getting PS3. I got <laughs> Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, Sonic Unleashed, like, games that you just wouldn't play now. But like, yeah, it's yeah. so nostalgic to me to the point where it's like I associate those games with the PS3. It's like a little bit of like joy and excitement, which is amazing. So I, so I, I grew up with the PS2. My first console was a PS2 yeah. in the box. With That's got a PS2 it. up there behind the pillow. Yeah. I've never used it, but it's up there. Actually, no, it's a PS1, I think. Is, is it the grey one? The one that's... that's PS1's PS1. grey. PS1's yeah, I've got a PS1 yeah. up there, then. Uh, well, me, me and Shed, we grew up in the era of that. Like, the PS1 and PS2. I think I got a PS2 for Christmas. I got the slim model. I don't know which one you got, Shed. I got, like, you know, like, the really slim yeah. ones? Like, the American? Oh, I yeah, just like... realised. Um, I played on a PS2 today. Uh, when I, at college, we were celebrating because it was the last day of Christmas, and they get all the consoles and stuff out because we work in the media and games department, so we've got all these like old consoles, etc. We played, <laughs> we we all celebrated by doing one v ones on Rust on Black Ops Two, oh, and um, that was good. And there was also a PS2 playing a game that no one will know because it's, it was made by the people at the college, like they they developed their oh. own games, etc. But we yeah. played that; it was pretty bad. But it was on the PS2, and it was good fun. It had like some weird um, add-on controller with a big red button on it, and then like three, like four different colors. I, I can't you remember. It was a weird like looking the bus thing. Controller. Yes, that would be it. <laughs> the quiz one. Oh, I actually, well, I I actually went back recently, and I bought like all the old consoles in lockdown. I've been meaning to play them, and I have done a couple of streams on them. But when you go back and play the original Call of Duty on PS2, it doesn't have the same feel. <laughs> No, I think... Oh, I, no, I, I, no, it's could you adjust. Yeah, no, I, I've said this as well. It's like, you know, I love the nostalgia. I grew up, like, with the PS1, PS2, but I, I my favorite console generation is, like, the Xbox 360, PS3. That was, like, that was, uh, for me, at least, a bliss era. You know, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3. You know, it was it's such awesome. a bliss era, in my opinion, right? I, I, plus the online era, right, of, like, gaming with your friends and your buddies online. That, that was awesome. But, I'm like... um. Oh yeah, I miss the old. I miss the old days of like all those old console days and playing with all your old friends. One, one day we days. should try and re re inhabit one of those games, like because I know we both have an old Gato Joe. Yeah, we should go back and inhabit with our community. That would, would be amazing. Glory days. <laughs> uh, it, it would be amazing. Honestly, I was going to say though, like this is where I was getting to with that though. It's like it doesn't matter if you play those games now because if you do, like that kind of special 
atmosphere is kind of gone because we've, we've all we've all played like next level games right like ps5 mm. games ps4 except like you see next level gaming now and when you're going back and play those old games on like ps2 or the playstation 1 and whatnot you can't it's very help janky. but really look at the yeah look at the graphics and go you just get frustrated yeah well that's it it's it's, it's like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I, I loved San Andreas, Grand Theft Auto. Like, that was beautiful, an amazing game, etc. I still love it, but it's like, you can't help but compare it to GTA V and go... I guess it kind of depends uh... on the, the era in which it, it, it was encountered, because it's like, I feel like I could still easily go back and play Halo 4. Like, yeah, well, it doesn't Halo look terrible. Was... Like, I, would, I would argue some games that I play now don't look as good. Like, Titanfall still looks... For, for a current day game is pretty bad, even though I love it. And also Apex Legends is it's not the most graphically appealing thing no, when you play it. I, so. I think I think there's a few games like that where it's like some some have aged very poorly and some haven't. This game in the background here is Borderlands One and this one is like my favorite. I'll be playing this on Christmas. I, I love this game. I Borderlands for so long. <laughs> oh shit. You know say I am I'm a fangirl for Borderlands. You know say if you're gonna ever gonna play with anybody, give me a show. I am I will tell you everything. You know what I'm saying? I, I know everything about the game. I am the like yeah, biggest fangirl. Like every building here, I've climbed, stood on, and walked around on. This is this is my this is my home. You know say this is my second Something house. Something in Destiny. Oh Sorry. yo, I, I've got to play Destiny. I've never played Destiny. But going on to the script there from the Christmas question, and once again, thank you, Chef, for coming on the show and whatnot. Um, wow. We thought an amazing topic to begin this podcast episode with you would be to talk about you becoming a father, right? And we've already discussed this with you privately and whatnot, um, but we thought it'd be an interesting kind of discussion to bring up on the episode. Uh, so for those of you who are listening who don't already know, back in June earlier this year, Shedward actually announced privately that his girlfriend, Abby, was pregnant and was expecting in December. And may I just say, by the way, on behalf of myself, of course, and Joseph, and I'm sure that all the listeners listening, congratulations, bro. Um, but there is now a little bit more to announce, isn't there? Yeah, she uh, she had the baby last week. Uh, it was a it was a very long birth. <laughs> God, so damn it. Wait, do I not know this? Is this like? Did you not know? No, no, I know this part, but you oh. said there's more to announce. Have you kept secrets from me? Oh, no. <laughs> no, there's no there's no other babies anywhere. I just thought. But I say, if you're gonna say there's like twins or something, I'm like, I'm, well, first of all, congratulations. Just like what? Of all, I'm sorry, what? but One like. One for now, god dang, man. It's it's mad though, right? Because it's like, it, you know, we were actually planning on, the, like, we said this in the beginning, obviously, we were planning on recording this episode, I mean, Shed, you know, this way back in, you know, what, November of last year, before we took this massive hiatus from TFP, and I'm, I'm kind of, I said this to Joseph privately, Shed, I'm, I'm actually quite happy that we, we didn't record it then, because not only one was back then, we were all different people, we've all, I think, in this past year, I'm sure you have Shed as well, definitely, I mean, especially with the recent <laughs> stuff, obviously, becoming a father and whatnot, doing again, Man, congratulations, bro. You're the first parent to come on the show, you know what I'm saying, which is insane. Uh, but, dude, I mean, honestly, bro, it's, it's just it's mad, you know what I'm saying, man? I can, I can only imagine how crazy it must be for you right now, like, having to, I guess, I, I, stepping into this new era of life, you know what I'm saying, man? Like, I, I, I can't imagine me being a father and, like, the, the fact that, that I know one day I hopefully will be, it's, it's beautiful, but it's, like, it's almost, like, it's so unreal, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, it's, funny, it's funny you say that because, like, I know you mentioned it on a previous podcast as well, how like you still feel like a kid, like Yeah. Like, I think that was Rocky's like, episode. You never you never like you know feel like you know old like take the father mantle until you really get there. Yeah. Well that's it. it's it's like, like I'm, oh, go on, I'm twenty four now, but I still feel like a kid at heart, you know what I mean? So Yeah, it's Bro, I mean, I, I still feel the same way I felt when I was 15, right? And I share the same with you. Like, you like you can still, like, remember high school. And you're like, no, that's, that's, that yeah. was, like, yesterday. No, that wasn't that long ago. Like, it's, I know, I, I see friends of mine, though, and, like, including yourself, obviously, of course, having, having a kid, man. It, it's mad. I, I actually speak to this girl um, named Tony. And I knew, I knew her from high school. She's my age, 21 and whatnot as well. And she just had a, had a kid. And she was like, Joe, I, I'm telling you, I would never have had a kid. Like, I, I never, I said to myself, I'm never going to have kids. And I, I did. And it, she's like, I'm so happy I did. But she's like, it's just so weird because it's so mad to really think and wrap your head around that, like, I'm now a parent. You know what I mean? Like, it's, I feel like you, once you become a parent, I feel like there must be some, like, mental transition of, like, now I'm, like, now I am an adult. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you've got it's so much responsibility. It's definitely a bizarre, like, my, like life change obviously of course and on that note as well it's like um obviously i'm significantly younger but i remember I, i'm still in contact we're not really in contact but just, i see them online like people i used to go to school with and one of them about two months ago now announced that they like had a like had a kid like they has been born yeah i'm like yeah. you're the same age as me like i'm 17 and that man is a father 
Like no, it's, <laughs> what? It's it's really perplexing. And I'm sure, Shad, obviously yourself, like you probably know people like before you've now became a father. You probably yeah. know people from school and all that kind of stuff. That like myself, that, that they're either getting married or they're having kids. And it's like this is just it just doesn't feel right because it's like I'm I'm still so young. But it's like there's no age to become a parent. Like there is legally. You know what I'm saying, but it's like in, in general, you're about to get arrested. <laughs> well, hold a second, hold a second, hold a second, hold a second. Well, hold a second. You have to say no, no. But like in, in general, though, it's like there's no actual like when, whenever you're ready, you're ready. You know what I mean? But it's like, dude, I mean, I can only imagine the mentality, like how things must have changed. Like, I, 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 I don't know. It's for me and Joseph, when we we're speaking about this, it was super perplexing because I was like, so I just get... like a, you know, a mental change, like so yeah, transition to becoming a father. Because then you think, you know, now I have this responsibility, uh, you know, child, and this responsibility, yeah. and you know, it's not just you don't just think about you then. No, of course. Well, well that's it. it's kind of life. Yeah, I, it's it's mad to think though. Like it, it's because I mean, Shelley, like you said like you you're still a kid, man. We're we're still all kids. I, I remember there's like this quote where it's like kids having kids, right? And it sounds weird like that, but it, it's the concept of like our parents are just kids still. Like, like we're Russian we're all devils. the same. You know, like my dad uh, when I was born, my dad was 27, right? So in my mind, it's like I'm thinking, right? Well, say I want to have kids. If I have kids when I'm 27, I've only got six years to go. I'm I mean I'm I'm turning uh, 22 in January, January 11th. So it's six years, right? Or well, it's less than that, five years, right? And it's just so. It's hard to wrap my head around, Jobs. I, I mean, you heard me say it in another episode. It's just it's, you can't really get around it a little bit. But I mean, it's I can only imagine how mad, how mad and how uh, amazing as really well must be. It's really into perspective as well, which is equally yeah. scary. Yeah, the, yeah, the limitations. Like, as, soon as, as soon as my baby was born, I was like, now the clock starts ticking. You know, mm. as soon as it comes out, you know, then a week and then a month and then ten years, eighteen years, and everything is going to do, you know, from that point. So it definitely yeah. puts time into perspective. But I think. If I was a lot younger, I think it'd be like really difficult for me because I've kind of done the things that I wanted to do, like with uni and things like that. Yeah, so, of, course, of course, yeah. You know, now I'm more stable in a job, and you know, you, you, you've sorry, God, you, you've 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 matured quite a lot as well. That's the thing, obviously, of course. Like you're not just kind of a young teen just going into you're, you've matured and you've kind of you've got your thing you've got yourself in line you know perspective wise what you need to do yeah. what you're going to do etc okay. and that's that's quite that's quite good obviously man. That's, that's obviously integral for doing something like this or for having a kid really and raising a kid in general man but it is it's one of those things man it's just like it's it bewilders me when i hear about friends having kids and whatnot because not because it's wrong it's just because it's so like it makes you go like wow this is so it just doesn't seem right like it, it's crazy you like I, me five years ago that when you're like 24 you know, you'll have a kid. You, I'll be like, no chance. No, no, it's like no, no, no. But it's crazy. I mean, I think it's like one of those things that just it doesn't. I mean, like right now, has it has it fully sunk in? Do you, do you still feel like this isn't right? Yeah, like this is crazy. Like it's to wrap your head around or is it, is it fully it's still sunk starting in? to sink in now because obviously, you know, she was in hospital for like of course, yeah. five six days because she had a C section, so they have to cut you oh. open and get the baby. Yeah. Out, which is actually what happened to me when I was born. So I was like a six pound baby. Mm -hmm. And I was on like a, a respirator for like a couple of months, but the baby was all fine. Good, but, um, good. There's a lot of complications that cause infections and things like that. But I was just in the hospital like 15, 20 hours, coming home for four hours sleep, going back, back and forth. So it was, you know, it was difficult to for it to settle in because he wasn't home then. But now he's home, and you know, they're they're both home and both well and settling good, in more now. So that's good, <laughs> man. That, that's honestly... as soon as as soon as he came out. You know, she had because she had a C-section. I was the first person to hold the baby, and oh, <laughs> and, oh here's a gift for you. I could hear him coming down the, the hallway, crying, and I thought, oh, I got a feeling that's him. And then they mm. gave him to me and said, here's a gift, and they gave me wrapped in a blanket, and they said you can put him in the cart if you want. Oh and then, man! So I put him in the cart, and I wanted to pick him back up, but I didn't want to pick him up because I thought I was going to break him. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh and then I had to learn how to feed him and change all the nappies for like three or four days. And I yeah. was like, this isn't how I imagined it at all because I thought my girl would that go? this stuff. <laughs> so I was the one who had to take charge and like, you know, um, yeah. didn't do everything in the beginning. So it was uh, it was strange, but it's, it is a nice feeling like when you look into baby's eyes for the first time. Man, it, it sounds honestly, man, like such a beautiful moment. I remember my, my father too told me. for me. 
It's it's so heartwarming. It's it's heartwarming, man. But like, I remember my dad told me because obviously I'm a I'm a six foot giant, right? You have to say. But my dad told me when I when I was born, obviously, like it was mad because my dad was like, you know, I I could hold you in the palm of my hand. You were that small. He's like, it was it was mad. He's like, you're just. He's like, and it, you know, one of the biggest. And I'll tell you this. I'm sure you probably had, you know, your parents' family tell you the same, whatnot. Um, take photos. Take photos. It's like the the best thing you can do. Apparently, you know, I, again, I don't know from experience, but my dad's told me, and I've thankfully got photos of me from you know a baby all the way growing up. You know. But it's, which, it's, by the way, would be so much videos. easier for you as well, because like, that's the bizarre thing about the new generations and stuff yeah, like that. Fun. We've got good technology yeah, to do this yeah. now as well. Well, that's that's a beautiful thing about it. It's like, I mean, shared. You can just pull out your phone. It, it, it's right there. You know, and that's you can you. stream the there. kids' life for what you want. Well, when when I when I was born at you know the two thousands right you know my dad that's what he said he used to have to have the actual video cassette like record like the recorder like the actual thing and you know he was like it was it was it wasn't easy you know he's like having to get that put onto DVD or having to do all this he's like it wasn't an easy thing he's like but obviously thankfully I got it and then right, getting like the cameras all the VHSs with me on it if you look at all the technology that's in the smartphone you put it all on you know you could fill up like a whole room the floor of a whole room with all the technology, yeah just in one phone you know your alarm clock it, it's mad your camera your notepad. Like so much goes into that, you know, one little device. It's crazy. It's, but we did take is. a lot of pictures. I took loads of pictures. So. Oh, that's good, man. <laughs> gonna fill up a little baby book. So I, I got to ask you: is, is your kid gonna be a gamer? You're gonna get your kid right into games, right away? Yeah, I think he's gonna be a Shedward Junior. Hell yeah, <laughs> you're man! Get him on the PS4, you know, or the Xbox, on like. the mantle. Pass on the mantle, and he's like, you know, 16, 18. <laughs> I've, I've heard it's a beautiful moment when he'll beat you in a game. That that day will come. It's, it's surreal, man. You ever say it? one day? Dude, one I day you're getting say... that power. I know what that's like. Oh man, I, same with me. I, I, I well, my dad. One day your dad has to keep combat. trying to play. That's what my yeah. yeah it's, it's surreal. That's the Beautiful. thing for me. Like I can't wait till it's like <clears throat> till he's like two or three years old, and he's into movies and TV shows. Oh. And, yeah, I'll get out all the old consoles and be like, have a go at this. This is what yeah. I used to play. We're, we're... Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're, we're gonna go through all these consoles. You're gonna become the ultimate gamer. That's what it is. And I'll just oh, say shit. to Abby, I'll just say, you know, we're just going to go in the games room and chill and, you, can, you know, you can go and do what you want to do. <laughs> oh, man, that, that sounds bliss. Man. What's the first console you think you're going to let him play? Uh, I think I'll probably give him the Xbox Series S, to be honest. Mm, <laughs> Xbox, never so. Start with the 360, be generous. <laughs> I don't have a 360. I bought the Series S like six months ago. Well, that's ago. the first birthday it. present then. Oh, I definitely need to get one. 100% 360. Oh, maybe the Wii. I, maybe the Wii's a solid choice. The Wii's a solid yeah. choice. I never had a Wii growing up, but I bought it recently just because I oh, was really? like, interested in, you know, playing Mario and stuff. And I thought, why not? I was, I was really bored in like that. I was just buying so much random stuff <laughs> like Wii and PS2, PS1, everything. I even bought a DS. I've not even used them. So I'll just got that. I mean, it, I was going to say, at least you got the whole collection. You know what I mean? Like the whole. Yeah. The whole We're actually going to cover this a little bit later down the podcast, but it's cool to like you know dip our toes into it. It's cool to see uh, people playing on multi-generational stuff as well because it it, it kind of gets boring when you're just on the same thing over and over. I feel like that's something yeah. that a lot of people realise. Well, I yeah, think but, um, it'd be nice to open up you know the younger generations to show them what we used to play. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think, I think introducing them into that before the new stuff is kind of a good way of making them appreciate it as well yeah like uh, my brother um he's i think he's like 11 i forget i don't count ages but um <laughs> he he was Jesus. raised with like a ps4 and stuff and like oh my god man he, he's going to kill me like he will kill me like he he, he has the ability to just i feel like if he if he grew up with some things that were a bit more you know rustic i feel like he might have developed a bit more of a maybe not as violent you know it would be nice I actually oh, also got two years ago. I bought a Game Boy, so right. I've got that as well, which is oh, quite cool to buy around. Game with. Oh, I Could wish I, I see... still had one. I used to have two. And Wait, what happened one. to them? I don't know. I think they got like damaged or something. I think I left them in a suitcase, and they got like oh. covered in like, or something. I might still oh. have them some. I want to get another one, but they're like 150 pounds or something for a Game Boy these well, days. That's that's the thing. It's like you know, <clears throat> owning these old consoles like the Xbox 360s, PlayStation 3s. It's mad to believe, right? But at one point in a, in, a, in, a, in a not too far long future, right now, those consoles are going to become relics. Those are going to become valuable. 
You know, like, it's like, we all grew up with, like, you know, the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and that's became relics now. Like, people look at them and go, oh, those are old consoles. It's like, excuse me, you know, they're not old, you're know saying, like, they're, they're somewhat, like, a little bit old, but they're not too bad. But then it's like the Xbox 360, like, that's, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's uh, this December, or, well, it's, now it's December, but it's this January or something like that. The Xbox 360, like, Halo servers, they get shut down, and other servers are slowly getting shut down. And it's sad to think that one day those are all going to be shut down. Like, though, that era of us gaming, you know what I'm saying, on the PS3s and the Xbox 360s will yeah. no longer be there. It's a shame. It is, man. I wish it would be like just open forever. You know what I'm saying we we need them. We need them so bad. <laughs> if it wasn't that, if they didn't have to pay money to run them, then I think that would be it's just. Oh, the definitely, yeah. Cost of it. Not but if sad, you think back it... to our parents' generation as well with the Ataris, like when we look at those, yeah, we think like I can't imagine myself playing Pong on that on that console, you know, <laughs> on a tiny TV. Yeah, we got Pong was absolutely PS4. fantastic. I heard Pong was actually not too bad. They need some I, new maps, though, I think. It, what, no, Pong was Pong was just a classic. I played Pong. It was but yeah, you, you see like kids moaning about the lag or the graphics on the oh, PS4, yeah. and you think, oh, when I was on the PS1, yeah, and you know, you got these big chunky square hands, and you know, it's yeah, all, it's, it's all blurry what, and pixelated. I was gonna say you played Crash Bandicoot for the PS1. I've seen gameplay one. I played some yeah. PS2, PS1, game. and it's like, I mean, you know yourself, it's like. People look at that and go, oh, why would you play that? It's, it's not very nice looking. It's like, it's not about that. Back then, it wasn't about amazing graphics. It was about how the game felt and how you played it. You know, and a yeah, lot of the old school games that. like Crash were amazing. I love I Crash Bandicoot. I think it has to be about graphics. So that's one thing that really <clears throat> annoys me when people are like, oh, it's good because of graphics. I'm like, no, it's not. Like uh, a few episodes back when we were just using gameplay, didn't have face cams and stuff, I used, there's a game that came out like semi-recently called Ultra Kill, and it's all based off Doom graphics, like old Doom graphics, but modern. Oh, right. Doesn't look oh, fantastic, I saw that. Yeah, I saw but that. it yeah, is, man. you know, still really fun. That's the idea. I feel like the idea is it to be more fun than it is to be visually pleasing, unless well, it I, is incredibly story based. I was gonna say, but I think all of us, like all three of us, we we all kind of grew up in that era where it was like graphics was important, but it, it wasn't mandatory. But it wasn't you know, like, it was It was more like we grew up in an era of like, okay, it's more about what's the what is the gameplay? Is the, the gameplay story. fun? Yeah, the st the story, of the gameplay, is it fun? Is it enjoyable? Great. Well, that that's what you buy it for. But now most kids. They're like, oh, we want a game that's shiny and it's all bright and all graphically. Whatever. It's like they want a game that looks amazing. You know, like they, they want something that looks polished and whatnot. It looks almost like real. You know, a game's like Cyberpunk, even though Cyberpunk was a complete flop. Awful. But, yeah. But we, we kind of like briefed over it a little bit, you know, further up when we were speaking about, you know, you becoming a father and that. But now that you are officially becoming a father, well, you have become a father. How have your priorities changed, like YouTube wise, job wise, just the way you have an outtake on life? Like, how has that changed since the. The birth of your son i think at the moment it's still it's still quite difficult because you know i'm off work at the moment yeah and you know the baby's just been born so he lives with his mom so we're still waiting to get a place together uh which will be great when that happens but you know these things cost money you know i'm quite yeah. expensive take, so. take take time cost money exactly yeah yeah so at the moment we just i'm just spending a couple of days at home a couple of days there and then in the days I'm at home, I can do a bit of streaming. But when I'm back at work, then things might have to change. Uh, it's, it's the same when I got my new job and I do night shifts like four nights on, four nights off. So I have to stream on my nights off because it's impossible to stream on the four nights of work because yeah. I do 12 night shifts. You know, oh, so dang. It, it will be a case of just sitting down and thinking like, you know, where do I get the free time and when can I stream? Which is a shame because I'd love to do it full time, but obviously... You know, YouTube doesn't really pay the bills until you're, you know, at a huge level. So, yeah, yeah, we'll see, really. But I just what? want to spend as much time with the baby as I can and, and try and, you know, balance it out. No, I, I respect him. I, that's why we really appreciate you coming on the show because it was kind of, um, it was one of those things, I mean, Shade, you know this obviously yourself and whatnot. It was kind of like for us, for a lot of people watching you or listening, of course, you guys won't really know. Like I said, we're ready. We were, we've been arranging this behind the scenes for a year and we wanted to do it last year, but then sadly we couldn't because we took a hiatus from YouTube and we felt very bad about that. But I'm glad we took that break because not only have we all matured and got better at our own crafts, but also we've improved TFP tenfold, getting an official logo, our tiering system, etc. Um, but also, you know, even this episode here, we were going to record this, I, I think it was on November... Uh, November 29th I think it was that was when we were it originally going to record like that. there it was it was a day before it was a day before the 1.18 update came out and I ended up having to delay it sadly because I, we shared you already of course and so is Joseph right and I was like I oh was okay let's get it going yeah yeah we're, we're all ready to go five hours, Santa. 
<laughs> oh man, I felt terrible, well, honestly. I it was just one of those things. Joseph was ready to go as well, right? And you know, Joseph was, and so were you. Obviously, I can't thank you guys enough for that. But it was just obviously I had the one point eighteen stream I had to do, um, which was just it was it was complete hell. But I'm glad as well that we delayed that because, in, in all in all fairness, if we hadn't delayed it, we could have recorded it then, and it would have been done in advance, and it would still be coming out, you know, this Saturday coming, right? But this would have been before you became a father, and that was kind of like the basis of the episode for anybody listening. We um initially it was kind of like this this episode that we we're gonna record just before now was kind of the old shed words I'd say respectfully right like it was like you know the old channel art right the old channel art you know uh, the old kind of look and also like kind of that that uh, that I guess now previous mentality because obviously that was before the, the child was born and like you said yeah. the minute the child's born it's like it's different it's different time it's a different guy here this is a totally different thing and that's why i'm happy we we did somewhat delay it till now and it's it's good because i feel like we've got the best of all worlds here this is like the best that we could have done it with and it's so i, I kind of love that about the podcast the fact that it was almost like fight for it to happen and it, it's yeah. awesome that we did wait as well because it's like you know this is such a special thing to talk about and of to have course. it on the podcast is absolutely like it's an honor to us Oh and no! I think that's just a yeah. really awesome thing to talk about. I described it as the own, obviously, as it's a Christmas-rated episode. It's kind of like the TFP nativity Maybe. play with uh, <laughs> the new little Jesus that was born. <laughs> we like the three wise men. It's strange <laughs> to think about. It's like you say, like we all change every year. You know, we're different people. Yeah, like completely different to how you was last year in the way you think and the way you act and the things you do and your interests. And I Definitely. think it has been a massive change. You know. And especially a change in the world as well with COVID and everything. Like last year, like I was in the middle of a lockdown, which that might yeah. be happening soon. We, we don't know, but hopefully mm. not. Um, but yeah, like everything's changed. So, and I think, you know, there's more meat on the bone now for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's a good way of putting it. I think there definitely is, you know what I mean? But I think the, the delays and not doing it like last year and doing it this year, but then not doing it theory if I'm doing it now, it, it's allowed us to get the best. You know what I mean? Like you said perfectly, the more meat on the bone, right? Like that's a good way of putting it, right? But it's like that now we have like this amazing kind of, I guess, amount of things to speak about. You know what I'm saying? You becoming a father and whatnot. But obviously, of course, the delays and we, we've got the best of all worlds. You know, we've got the professional quality, in my own opinion, at least. Uh, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe the background isn't too perfect. I think it's good. I love the little snowy cafe. I think it's lovely but you know a week till christmas basically when this episode releases of course i mean you're part of the only three episodes christmas tier it's season which i think is beautiful it's 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 pro you man we have honestly there's a lot dead in the middle of the other two so it, it's perfect that, it's it looks great here you know what I'm it looks it looks fantastic man but I, i'm very happy we can make this happen honestly and uh, I, I think just waiting for this to happen has been a, a, a fantastic a fantastic thing excuse me at least in my own personal opinion yeah, I've been excited to do it for a while because obviously we got our own podcast going that run on the on the Shedvers channel, and we've been uh, we've been trying to put that together. And it's nice to just come on and talk as me rather than interviewing other people yeah. and talk different topics because I think a lot of people they don't really know much about me as a person because no. in these five hour streams, people will ask all these questions, but they're you know. People are not going to sit there for six hours and go back and dig for that stuff, you know. So. No, no, I, I, I think that's that's the value in the podcast and what we do here because it's yeah. like, I, you, you, you get it exactly hundred percent. I think more sure, of course, because like you said, you've got Shedcast, you run Shedcast, and you know, with that, you know, being a podcast host as opposed to being a guest are two very different things. And there's a lot of work that goes into podcasts like ours, you know, like you know, TFP and Shedcast, same idea. It's a lot of work goes into it. And like you said, I mean, you said already. Hope you don't mind me mentioning this, but like you're in the midst right now of editing up a new episode of Shedcast, right? And yeah. that's taking you quite a while. Like you, you you're putting time into it you're trying well, to dedicate actually, it to it it's took me a couple of weeks because i've been meaning to do it in between work and managing everything and of then you, you sit down and you do an hour on it or half an hour and you have to listen through the whole thing and you know split it up make sure all the audio synced in the background yeah. it's it is a, a huge amount of work like <laughs> when you think about a podcast people just think oh you stick it stick the audio on there stick the visual and that's it but no, it's <laughs> if like, you want to no. make it the best quality it's it's a lot of it, work it's that easy exactly yeah it, it's one of those things that it's um you know for us as well like for tfp you know like we love the forgotten podcast we love doing this you know what i'm saying we really truly do but it's something that takes a lot of time because we want to make sure the scripts feel like like they have effort put into them we want to make sure the guest feels like they're feeling welcome and we yeah. we just want to make sure we we proofread everything we go through the scripts multiple times you know we might mess up in the intro right but like the, the scripts itself we, we do everything as best we can and we same with the editing joseph does that and we've got the thumbnails and the but in perspective system. as well the uh, VIP man episode rendered and uploaded over the course of two days. I had yeah. no Wi-Fi for two days Couldn't because do of it. Like at, at this house, I, obviously I'm going to get an upgrade soon, but at this house the Wi-Fi is not very good, so it kind of decimates the Wi-Fi. So yeah. um, 
like I had no productivity, pro, like productivity at all for two days straight because of the podcast. And, but it's out and it's beautiful, so it's fine. Yeah, I but that's, that's the, the worst thing for a content creator when the Wi-Fi's playing. Oh. oh, especially when you're getting ideas and you've got motivation. Why, as well, why does man? nobody like, ever have fast enough Wi-Fi, dude? Because well, I live in the middle of Kent. That's why. Oh man, where, where I live, it's like mountains all around. So like my Wi-Fi here is terrible. I get two megabytes upload if I'm very lucky. You know what I'm saying, and then maybe ten download. And like normally, that's me being very generous. Like I, I know, like I've said this before, my internet is like McDonald's Wi-Fi. It's it's not great. It's it's not great. It does the job, but it's not great. You've said it's not great at all. But no, I, I I'm very happy to get us going, and I, I'm really happy we can make this happen because it's something we've all been wanting to do for a really long time. Yeah, I'm glad that I'm glad that we've been able to put it together, and uh, happy to be here. You know, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you, man. Um, going on to the next question here, right? This is mine because we, we always kind of try and jump back and forth, right? Um, and we've kind of already touched on this. This is the beautiful part about it because of all, all the stuff we're talking about. We kind of already we all, we already kind of dab in or kind of jump into the questions a teeny bit when we come back out. But this one here is a, more regarding you know Abby and yourself, right? So I, I feel like becoming a parent or making the decision to become one is such a big evolution for an individual um, that takes some serious level of preparation and self evaluation to be able to look at yourself and say confidently, you know, I'm ready for this, right? So what I wanted to ask was, how did you and Abby kind of decide or know that you were both ready for this next step in your lives? Because it's, it's such a big one, obviously, such a huge change as well. Um, well, I've always I've always wanted to be a dad, you know, I've always wanted to have a kid and teach him stuff and pass on, you know, all the morals and all the yeah. things that I've learned. Um, and I think when you say 24 is quite young, in my head, I'm thinking, well, when he's 20, you know, I'm going to be 44. And if I wait yeah. till he's 30, I'm going to be like, you know, 50 something. Yeah. So I didn't even yeah. think about that. Like the idea of your lifespan alongside theirs. So yeah, that thinking... never crossed my mind. That is actually a really good point. Yeah, so Go I didn't want to be too old. I don't want to be like a dad that, you know, can't really do much. You know, can't no. take the or run around or, you know, do anything with them. So I thought now for me it was the perfect time. And like my family, they tend to have their, their kids quite young. Like I've got nieces that have got like three kids and my sisters have all got kids and my brothers and siblings. And I thought now for me was the, the perfect time. So, and I think, I think I've matured a lot over the last five years, like from when I started uni to now. Like I think I'm in a much better, you know, mindset to be to become yeah. a parent. So. I mean, what about Abby? Like, was it like is she is Abby the same age as you? Uh, so Abby's a, a bit younger than me. So when we met, I think she was 19. Uh, I think she's like 21 now. Yeah, just right. turned 21. Yeah. So she's a little bit younger, but she's always wanted to become a parent as well. Um, a sister just had a baby, so oh. obviously, you know, <laughs> yeah, when yeah. They, baby, they get quite broody. <laughs> <laughs> that tends to happen but yeah i think she's gonna be a, an amazing mom so you know. oh man I'm sure of it dude <laughs> i think you're gonna so be awesome. amazing dad as well it, it is it is but i think honestly bro 100 percent, man you and her are gonna be fantastic the right person as well. yeah exactly yeah i mean well you see i mean this is the thing you and abby you guys haven't been together only for like a, a, a year or one it's been quite a little while right it's been uh two years now god damn so we've been together all through the lockdowns and everything like that so god how did you just meet <laughs> Um, so we actually met in the Weatherspoons. Oh, really? <laughs> it was, uh, it was really awesome. I actually ordered a chicken burger and forgot to put the bun on. So I oh. just, had, you know, we I just like how you know the order. <laughs> God dang. Uh, so wait, you know. that chicken <laughs> burger changed your life. That's what it was. <laughs> that chicken burger changed your life, man. I'm telling you, dude, the smallest things. You know what I'm saying, dude? But that's but bliss, man. Like so what and what you, you kind of started speaking there and that's kind of where it like developed like developed from yeah so we actually started speaking our day inside and we was talking for a couple of months and then right. we decided to meet up we actually live quite close so we live like oh. you know 10 15 minutes away so it's not too Bad. far <clears throat> and then we went on the day and it's quite awkward at first but you know <laughs> we got we carried on going i don't on think a first date can never be like not awkward to be honest <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but that's that's bliss, dude. That really is lovely, man. Honestly, I feel like it's more awkward for Abby because she's quite shy. Oh right, yeah. I mean, oh, okay. so were you just trying to keep her happy, just trying to entertain her, be funny yeah. and whatnot, and just trying to be charismatic? God damn, yeah. man. Yeah, especially when I'm when I'm with someone, I always tend to like look look at them straight ahead, like in the eye. But on a day, it's a bit awkward sometimes. So yeah, <laughs> you get moving. Eye contact one hundred and one. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, she was moving ahead. I'm like. Why do you keep moving your head in a different yeah. direction? <laughs> 
Oh God, man, that's that's cute as hell. Honestly, dude, that really is, man. That's bliss. Yeah, I've seen it. So I mean, and since then, obviously, I mean, she's been a big supporter of your YouTube as well, man. I've seen that. You know, she's been. I've seen her in some of the streams, some of the older streams, some of the Q and A streams yeah. as well. Like she's been in there. She's like, you know, she's been supporting you, one of man. That's bliss. Is, is, does she really like what you do? Does she love YouTube and whatnot as well? Uh, well, in the past, like you know, when I've been involved with people, I've never, I've never actually told them about my YouTube. Right. But this yeah. time, I was in the middle of lockdown. I said to her, I said, look, I, I used to do YouTube, and I, I think I'm going to get back into it. And that was actually mainly spawned by people on my channel channel who still cared about um they still cared about the videos and i still was asking like shed where's the where's the videos when you're coming back after like a year or two being away yeah because the yeah and stuff i kind of just you know i kind of just left the channel there mm -hmm. but i feel like with youtube it's always in the background you always think oh, i kind of miss streaming i want to go back so i explained uh, yeah. to her i'm going to start youtube again and you know she doesn't really watch much youtube herself but she's happy that that i do it and that i'm happy doing it so you know <laughs> that's, that's the good, main that's thing good. Is she much of a gamer? No. <laughs> oh god, damn! Yeah, you gotta get her into the some Sims. games. Uh, what, I have like, got her into some games. Like, she played a bit of Until Dawn and stuff like that, but she's Until not, Dawn is she's a great a choice. Gamer. God but damn! Man. You gotta we've got Leo now to game with. Yeah, that's it. You're gonna you, you and Leo yeah, be sitting sense. gaming. You know what I'm saying? But you're gonna have to get her involved. You know what I'm saying? Do you think Leo yeah, will be able to beat her? Family get gaming sessions. Time. Well, her good sister's that. actually really into gaming, but she's not she's not too fussed about it. <laughs> oh, God, she's missing out. She's missing out. She really is. It's like good stuff gaming, honestly. She actually prefers to watch Rocky TV. <laughs> oh no, Rocky's our boy. Well, we all we all love Rocky here, right? But listen, she's gonna be watching you, man. That's what it is. Number one, you're know saying. <laughs> Gotta love Rocky. Though. I I can't lie. Listen, Rocky in those hot dog outfits. People. Rocky looking one fantastic. One of my favorite people. Like oh, when I'm Rocky said you, he was gonna quit YouTube, like I was I was so sad. Like I was oh, like man. this guy's so charismatic and so good at what he does. And you can sit listening to him for hours. So I was like, I'm so sad about it. But, you know, I think he's coming back now. Hopefully, you know, well, I, putting some stuff there. He, he said that to us in, in, in the podcast with him and whatnot. Uh, not to spoil that. If anybody wants to watch it, of course they can. But it was uh, it was a beautiful podcast with Rocky. Because, you know, Rocky's a, Rocky's a bit of a hurt soul. You know I mean, I think you know it's yourself, Shed. You know, he had a lot yeah. of this happened, you know, losing his father. And I mean, like, I, that's a horrible thing, right? You know, losing his father, his grandfather, etc. He had a lot that he really dealt with. And whatnot, yeah. But that's how... I, I can understand why he's, you know, he's, he's focusing right now, like you said yourself, you took a year off to kind of focus on uni, and that makes sense, man. You've got to focus on your priorities, you know? But he focused yeah. on, a, he's getting into welding now, and he's doing that, and that's great. You know, I'm so happy for him, you know what I'm saying? And he, he's such a great dude, and I definitely agree, you know, him taking a break or leaving would have been a, a pretty a pretty silly kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Because so many people love him, you know what I mean? He's brilliant. I hope he uh, keeps it, you know, keeps it in the background and comes back every time. Yeah. He does it streams you know <laughs> well that, that's 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 the beauty with youtube man it's something that you know you can do passively you don't have to do it every single day i mean you can if you wanted to get incredibly serious but you don't have to you know like uh even for myself like i'm the same kind of way like i've taken a bit of a break from my main channel to work on other passion projects twitch streaming you know obviously the podcast and then just a few other things just because i want to do it and this is my full-time job so it's kind of a bit of a bit more of a gamble but i i love it you know what I, mean? I just do this because it's my passion i'm like you know i want to do other things you know and the podcast means a lot to me so yeah. i want to do that I think sometimes you do have to take a step back. I know, like, yeah. I think last month I took, like, two weeks off and I'd just been streaming constantly. So, you know, I'd do four nights at work and then I'd do, like, I'd come back and four nights I'd just stream for six, seven, seven hours. I wouldn't do anything else. I'd be too burnt out. And I was talking yeah. about this in my podcast as well, but I think sometimes you do just have to take that break and just be like, I want to do other things for a bit and just relax and then just, get back Just enjoy and yourself, man. That, that That's really what it is, bro. Energy. It's yeah, such I mean, a common well, theme on the podcast as well, just burnout in general. It's so integral to get that nice balance when it comes to YouTube stuff. Me and yeah. Joe have spoken about this for hours on hours. It is yeah. it's such a weird balance between like, am I working too hard? Not enough, you know, not in certain areas, etc. Like that. So yeah. trying to find that balance is definitely difficult and taking a step back can always be a benefit, but at the same time it can be a risk and that's why it's a stressful like middle ground it's, I find, you know? It's hard to work with. It really is because it's um, you know, we all know this, I think, as content creators. You know, YouTube doesn't commend us or you know, congratulate us on taking breaks. We don't get any we don't get anything like that, you know, we don't get no rewards. It's more if if we take breaks because we need it, we're getting punished for that, which is kind of a shame because it's like we all need help, like like actual breaks and healthy breaks to be able to relax. And uh, doing daily uploads, I've done it multiple times, and it's just it wears you out, it wears you thin, and you're also not really interacting with people as well. It's it's just too much. So it's good when you can take a bit of a break, you know. But yeah, um, do you think we should take a quick break? I think Shed right now is a bit of a. Emergency. I think that would be a dandy idea. I'm yeah, gonna we'll probably go grab another cup of tea anyway. 
Good idea. Right, we'll take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. We'll come back with part two in just a minute. Enjoy the break and enjoy your brews if you're making a copper. See you on a second. Welcome back, legends and specimens, to part two of episode 20. I forgot the episode. 26 is right there in the top left of my screen. But we come back strong with a nice, wholesome, and awesome question. And I've got to say, though, although your gaming buddy is new to the world, how did he enter the world? Well, actually, we don't don't answer that. We know how he did that. But how did he get his name? Who suggested it? And why is he named Leo? Um, so it was actually my idea to call him Leo. So when, uh, you know, when we was talking about having a baby, um, we always said that Abby would pick the girl's name. I'd pick the boy's name. But then when she mentioned girl's name, she wanted like Paisley. And I'm not a fan of that because it sounds like parsley. But oh. we won't talk about that. <laughs> but I don't know, I just, I like the name Leo because, you know, my name, my name's Mitchell. Or mm -hmm. I should say that online, but my name's Mitchell. Um, and everyone always, like, shortens it to Mitch. So I right. thought, if I'm giving the name Leo, then it's a cool name. So you, you can't really, you can't really take the mick out of that. You know, like, Mitchell, you no, no. Mitchell and Yeah. It's just, like, it's always annoyed me. I've always liked the shorter version of my name. So Leo, I thought, that's just a cool name. I think um, me and Joe are the same way with that sort of thing as well. Yeah, I think it's quite the same, actually. And I think the name Leo is a solid name, honestly. And I like the mentality where it's like, if it's a girl, Abby names the girl. If it's a boy, you need the boy. I've never and actually it's seen cool. couples do that, which is really bizarre because well, it's a really good way of doing my, it. Yeah, my, my mom and dad done the same thing because my mother, uh, I don't know what she would have called me if I was a little a little girl. You know, so I don't know. Who, who who knows? Josefina. You never know, right? But my, my father thought the name, my father, because in my family, uh, there's like a tradition. I, mean, I don't I don't know if you guys have the same in your kind of family. Some, some families do. Um, it's a bit of a weird tra a tradition, but my family, there's all kind of thing where it's a lot of Davids, a lot of Stevens, mm -hmm. a lot of, like there's a lot of, like the same names, like David Jr., David, you know, it's, it's really weird. Um, so my dad's name is Steven, his dad's name is David, his brother's called David, you know, it, it's it's just weird. You know, my uh, my cousin's called David, my, my uncle's called David, his son's called David, his dad's called David, it, it's a lot of Davids and Stevens. So my father went, right, I want a different name, so he called me Joseph, and it's because I can get called Joe for short, or Jojo in school when I was younger, Joseph, etc. And it was like, not, not a real good way of being able to mean my name thankfully so i was like oh yes good but well, my, at least uh, it was my, that easy for you <laughs> what what was my right, so as well is uh leo so i was born in the month of leo oh uh, i also, like star sign yeah, yeah. Star sign. Oh, that's uh, and cool. also, i just think there's so many cool people named leo you know like leonardo dicaprio and then, yeah there's actually a he's, got, he's got competition is what you're saying that's that's what <laughs> it is a power range when i was younger um, from Lost Galaxy, I think they made so many of those. But I used to be really into Power Rangers, and there was this one named Leo. And I just used to remember him being like, I used to think he was like the coolest guy. You know, you know, he had got two very different him. naming oh. tactics and idolizations. Because I've spoken about this to Lucy, like she brought it out one day, and she's like, "What about a guy and a girl? I want to. If it was a boy, I'd name it Jason. So, uh, is you that, know, that's different idols. Would, wait, is that what you? Another Red Ranger there, Jason. There you go. Well, there you go. Not the, not he's, the right kind he's, of Jason. Yeah, he's he's naming him Jason out of like Jason Voorhees, right? Yeah, Friday the 13th. <laughs> oh, naming a literal serial killer. Oh, okay, okay. Funny that though, like, although that sounds a bit meme I am named after Joey out of Friends. What? I'm named after Joey after from Friends. No. Uh, it's true. Um, it's funny because my mum named me Ethan, and he, she wanted to name me Ethan, and she, I was called Ethan for a little bit, um, but my dad hated it, so he just kept calling me Joe, like just oh out God. of spite, and I just originally uh, just became Joe. Uh, but before I was born, that she was debating calling me Sebastian, which apparently fits me anyway. But, Sebastian um, sounds like a cool yeah, name as well. Yeah, so I'd be instead of Joe and Joseph, it'd be Seb and Sebastian. So I would be Seb, um, which I'm not too mad about. Ethan, filmed. I'm glad that never made the light of day, but I am named after Joey from Friends, unfortunately. God damn, I don't like Friends. Don't have any either. What? I think I was named after <laughs> Phil Mitchell because my sister actually picked my name. And, uh, you know, really? he was on all the time and she thought Mitchell and she and she's like, that's the one. And my mum always liked Michael as well, but there's a lot of Michaels in my family. So she went with Mitchell. Oh, right. Yeah, like the same idea of Stephen and David. It's kind of like yeah. a family name. Like, update, okay. Okay. Yeah. But that's mad. So your your sister named you though? Yeah. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> well, that's, that's like some crossfire. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're a big family, so my mum and dad have had oh. like five kids. So, Jesus you know, some, some of them my dad picked, some of them my mum picked. And then when yeah, I was, well, because sorry. I was born like, through C-section, I was in the hospital a lot. 
my sister done a lot of the looking after me when I was growing up. So she. Oh. So, so yeah, you said earlier on that you had because you were mentioning siblings, and you're like, yeah, siblings. How, how many siblings do you have? Like, like quite a big, like quite a, a big family. Um, so I got two brothers and two sisters. I did have another brother, but he died when I was young through. Um, oh, so yeah, man. So, yeah, there would have been six of us in total. <laughs> God damn, that's, that's a family. A, that is that's a huge. And then family my mom's got like ten uh, grandkids. Wow. Grandkids. grandkids. <laughs> God, I'm guessing Christmas must just be hectic. You know what I'm saying? Do yeah. they all come over to like your your mom and dad's house? Do they do they live together? Um, so my mom and dad don't live together; they're separated. Right. Um, but we normally go and visit my dad, and then you know I live with my mom's anyway. So. <laughs> but pretty... is is that a big family thing? Like everybody's there's a lot of the grandkids, the kids, everything. It can be. Yeah. <laughs> God dang, I can imagine, man. The, the chaos. You know what I'm saying? No, fair enough, man. That's that's actually mad, dude. But I, honestly, it's crazy. You got like that many siblings. You know, say two brothers and two sisters. Yeah, that's quite family. mad. <laughs> that is that, that's a huge family. Well, we're moving on to the next thing, Shay. We've got what we call the Forgotten Seven. It's a reoccurring segment on this show where we ask seven a little bit more personal questions. They're, they're more kind of quick fire questions, right? Stuff that isn't as like as deep as the questions that we previously asked you. More just kind of just little things that you can kind of quite quickly and quite easily answer. You can take your time with them, so don't worry, right? Um, and it's more to tell the audience who you are as a person behind the content, more or less, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do, if you're comfortable with it, is I'm going to ask you seven questions and you just give us the most genuine answers you can and just enjoy yourself, all right? Try my best. <laughs> is that good? Good man. All right. What does your typical content creation outfit look like? Content creation. Which is, uh, yeah. What, what do you wear I'll while you're just like, making you know, an England top or an Adidas top and jeans or shorts? Actually, I play in shorts a lot and I always have a, a blanket on with it because I always get quite cold. I like oh. to be so. There's a thing um, called like jeans or like something along those lines, and it's <laughs> like it kind of it kind of like covers up that access bit where you feel yeah. a bit colder. <laughs> I'm quite weird like that though because I don't like to wear jeans like when I'm at home. Um, yeah, so I wear jeans all the time. Like that's my go-to like you know um, outfit. It's like jeans and a t-shirt. Yeah. But like, I Joe wears shoes, so just get I do. Some so you know, I always chuck some shorts on or some joggers on. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, jogger, you can't go wrong with cottons or joggers. Like, hell yeah, that's like the comfiest way of playing. That's kind of like what I do. Like, I normally wear, like, yeah, I've said this to Joseph, my weird thing is I wear shoes when I'm recording, mm. which is like, what? Why? But it's just, it's a weird thing. I'm not right now, for clarification. Wow, right? he's not even but, working. Well, that's why the saying? intro was so scuffed. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. But no, I, yeah, I normally wear shoes when I'm recording. It's just a weird thing. That's, I've always done it. I feel like I get better mm. luck with it. You know, say the video yeah, does I better. I don't really get into comfy clothes like that, though. It kind of, like, makes me feel lazy. I can't do anything. What, like, is that I what you're wearing? Kind of get ready, you know? Like, I feel like you got to be comfortable. Though. It's like you're going to sit there for yeah. six, five hours. Me, personally, like when I'm in a suit, like, you know, for a bit, I did like teaching and stuff like that. And I've worked in suits before for long periods of time. It just gets really hot and sweaty. So if I'm yes. going to sit here for seven, eight hours, you know, I'm just going to, you know, wear Yeah, something. you, you want to be mean, comfortable. If it gets man, to that it's, point, it's point, there's been a few streams where I've been wearing my normal attire. Um, and it just ends up with me just being in the shirt, which I mean, it's fine. It's easy to take off, etc. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Monty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's kind of like, <laughs> oh, that, yeah. that's the main attraction, bro. That's, it's like, kind of, no, that's what it is. That's how you get the donations. You know what I'm saying? It's just be like, every donation I get, we're going to undo one button. That's what it is. God <laughs> dang. But like, <laughs> but like, no, like, I, I think it's it's all about wearing clothes you're comfortable with. I mean, some people think of it differently. Like, I can't, me and Joseph can have that same sort of mentality where it's like he likes to wear the suit because it doesn't feel as lazy. I wear the shoes. Not because it doesn't feel as lazy, just because it makes it, me taller. It feels more All right? like I'm ready, you know what I mean? I feel like that's kind of what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, w when it comes into streams, I often wear like shirts like this, you know, normally sleeveless ones or whatnot. So it's a little bit more comfortable and a lot more kind of cool down because it does get way too hot. And especially when you've got lighting, like I've got big lights and they don't produce that much heat, but they can be a bit, you know, dazzling when you're trying to do stuff. Plus, well, like, I don't know about you guys, a PS4 or a computer, the heat they generate, man. Like it's it's horrible. Oh, it's like you're a sauna there. in here. I swear, man, you'd be sitting in there like, whew, oh, my I've God, got, I'm, like, I'm tanning because I've got so much stuff around, and then like you know, computer, TV, yeah, monitor, so many people, different consoles I've been on all the time. I'm, I'm telling you, man, people underestimate the heat that us gamers go through when trying to produce content. All right, it's a lot. It's a lot more than y'all think. I'm telling y'all, it's, it's for uh -huh. real. Especially when you dress as Santa. So going to the <laughs> next question, what's the best? That's true. Yeah, when you dress as Santa, I can imagine it's even hotter. You know what I'm saying? I want to get a Pink Panther coat or costume, but we'll, it's for another day. It's for another day. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given and who gave you it? Mm -hmm. That's a tough one because then I'm thinking about everyone I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every, every stranger uh, on the street. I think probably the best advice is just 
be yourself, try your best. And also treat people how you want to be treated. I think that's that phenomenal. A good that's... piece of advice. Yeah, I, I actually I live by that advice. Like I think like when, especially for you obviously becoming a father, I think it's obviously you said you definitely like you said this already, you want to pass down your morals to your kid. You know what you've learned, you know, not to be some, you know, a kid that doesn't respect their elders or they you know, don't respect people, they not speak, not to be, you know, correct, etc. But like that's a, a given that I got taught from my dad and my mum, which was uh, treat people the way you want to be treated. It's such a very simple little thing, but a lot of kids just don't acknowledge it, you know. They they expect to treat people trash and then get treated with respect. It's like, no, this is not how this word this is not how this works. You have to treat people the way you want to be treated. And if they don't treat you the same way back, that's fine. But you just got to understand that that's just how life is. You know, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't treat them with respect, you know. But no, it's a solid, a solid piece of advice. Fair yeah, I think that was a, those are morals that I live by. Because I'm not really religious or anything. I just think no, yeah. if you're a good person and, you know, you, you do your best and you treat people, you know, how you want to be treated. I think that's the best way to live. You know. Yeah, it's very no, like exactly. karma mentality, which I think is quite healthy. Yeah, I think I think whether you believe in you know karma or anything like that or whatever, I think it's kind of a good mentality, a healthy one to have. You know what I mean? Like the concept of like you know if you do good things for people, good things will come your way. Maybe not from that person or from that kind of thing, but it is what it is. But if you're trashy to people, it's going to come back and bite you. I'm saying I, that's what I like to think at least. I know it's a good way of living. I can't lie. Um, you know, positive energy. You know. Like, exactly. That's what it is. What is your absolute dream job? Uh, I feel like it's changed a lot over the years because I've, I've done so many different things, you know, like I started out, uh, wanted to do art. So, I've, you know, my background is in art. So I've got a master's degree in art, uh, a bachelor's in art. And then for a bit, I wanted to teach. Um, I wanted to teach design and tech and I was doing that for a while. Um, but with COVID and everything, um, I just didn't really have the passion there because it was all online. Um, yeah. So, things just change constantly but i think doing something like youtube it, it kind of fits well with what i want to do because i can be creative and you work for yourself and I think you decide that, your own times and everything yeah, yeah. and i think it, it gives my like art side the chance to shine as well like if I, you know when i start making more videos and putting effort into those videos and upgrading things and you know putting out content um putting out different kinds of videos on the channel i think i can you know show my creativity off and I think it's uh, it's a nice mix of everything, really. No, that's that's a, yeah, exactly. I think that's definitely the case. You know, you can kind of mix, and that's kind of the good thing. It's like you know, for me, I never went to college or anything like that, or university or anything. So. For me, like, uh, I don't have any other traits I've learned outside of what I've already learned myself. It's all been kind of like, you know, learned, you know, obviously at home kind of thing. Um, but for example, like you said, like you said, you, you, you've got masters and whatnot. Uh, or was it bachelor's, sorry? Was it masters and bachelor's? Yeah, I've got bachelor's, masters. That's phenomenal, man. That's, that's, ph that's insane. That's phenomenal. And Joseph right now, he's there. Uh, Joseph, what are you taking in college right now? Um, I'm doing correct. Well, I've already got a diploma. Um, yeah. But I'm, yeah. I'm working for an extended diploma. Um, oh. I've currently got a, um, I've got a merit in level three film production and creative media social media etc um which is basically just equ equivalent to like a levels uh, diploma so mm -hmm. it's not that's too bad nice. and i'm working that's towards as of right now i've got six more months until i'm graded on my second half which will then be an extended diploma in creative media and film production it's phenomenal. I mean, it's great to have these kind of traits, especially when you're a content creator, because it's when, when you're a content creator or a streamer or anything of the sort, a content creator is really what defines all of that. Um, an entertainer, right? Like, you know, it's good when you have all these extra things that you can pull from like, oh, no, I, I done this. I, I know this. You know, ah, there you go. Like, it's, it's awesome little things that you can have. And there are little bonuses that can really impact how you make them. Well, content. Which is nice. Yeah. To your name. It, it spices been, you up. I've always been very versatile like that, though. It's like when I was a, an artist and studying art, like my master's, I could never pin down what I wanted my main practice to be. So like, mm -hmm. even for my masters, I went into architecture and I'd never done right. anything to do with architecture before. And I based my entire masters, it was only one year on architecture. <laughs> so you, you're supposed to, for your masters, you're supposed to pin down what you want. But I've always been like, you know, jumping onto different things. So I do a bit of, you know, 3D modeling, um, CAD, CAM, all that stuff. Um, and then I'll do like woodwork and, you know, video making and video yeah. editing. It's actually very similar to oh, what I was doing as well, because I'm not, not on the same scale, obviously. But back at like my secondary, I was very into art. I now absolutely despise art. I'm now onto media, etc. because I enjoy that. That's what I do. Um, 
me and my dad are actually we, we he does uh, wood burning like he has one of the laser machines that cuts into yeah. wood etc oh, so that's, I'm getting yeah, quite that's into bliss. that and also we've got a plant because I've started like wood carving as well and we're making like little homemade stuff as well like that uh, printing onto things etc but we want to also start making a blacksmith and we want to start setting that about back so we're going to be like making like um axe heads etc it's just stuff me and my dad want to do and we're going to set up in the background it's just like stuff like that is like really cool for hobby backgrounds and stuff so if i can be like yeah i'm a video creator podcast host blacksmith <laughs> it, like that sort of stuff is so cool that that Archer, whole when, when you put, if you if you told me that right like i'm a video creator content creator i'm a blacksmith i blacksmith hold on a second well hold on a second. whoa whoa okay he's it, back you're saying what because, um, because like we we do that sort of stuff and we're like we want to invest into getting some more creative stuff outside and we want to get like at the anvil and stuff all that sort of stuff so we can actually start forming and making our own little place in the back which is going to be really cool that's brilliant and you know obviously on top of that I I'm doing my archery soon as well I well, swear Joseph's like, Joseph's a Viking we live Sorry. in the generation where you know we can learn anything it's that I think yeah it's every, you know you can go on Google and learn anything in seconds like when I was teaching you're basically just um, you know, you just Google personified, you just relay the information. Um, so like any business or anything you want to get into, you can learn it instantly and start it up. Like we're at the tipping point. So if you get interested in something like at this stage now, it's the easiest time to like launch that into something, you know. Oh, big. definitely. You know, yeah, I never got everything's in entirely fingers. involved in it. I got very like into it and I, I want to revisit it at some point, but I, I completely agree because I self-taught myself how to code for like God mm -hmm. knows how long. Um, I didn't get too far, but I know a lot more now than I did when I started. And every time I revisit it, I know it a bit more and I'm like, oh, this makes sense. And I, hopefully when I get a bit more spare time, I really want to get into it. But I completely agree that whole internet is, is, is like such a core way of learning new skills, etc. Like you can't see it now, but the wall in front of me is lined with notes it's got like about rigid bodies it's got about the the way things collide the maths behind vector systems and um, the way it would work with different code engines unity etc at the top it's got input keys etc stuff like that it's got access you know just like basic stuff but stuff to refer back to and i love that yeah. because it's all thanks to tutorials the internet and all that sort of stuff because it, it's everywhere and it's it's so easy to get and it, it is phenomenal I like work in a similar way to mine where you know, you like to do different things and learn constantly and, you know, taking different stuff. Well, I feel like if you don't learn constantly, like, it's really boring. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm quite an, I'm quite knowledge not in that kind of sense. Well, it's like I remember my dad always saying, you know, your, your brain's like a sponge, you know, like and especially like the, when you're young, soak up as much as you can, because, you know, knowledge is knowledge is power. You know, what I mean, at the end of the day, like you might not be where you want to be in general, but if you've got enough and you know enough, you can get there as well. You just got to work hard enough and you're just going to know enough. It's phenomenal, and that's why it's good to know like anything you can and learn everything you can. And there's no excuse for it nowadays. You can't be like, oh well, I, I can't go back to school all the time. Well, you've got a phone, don't you? Yeah. Well, go, go on your phone, Google it, start looking up stuff, start getting you know research. You can do anything. It's all there. Being young, people always go on about like paid classes as well. Sorry to cut you off, by the way, but people always go like paid classes, and I'm like, you don't need to pay for no. anything. No, it's it's all, there. all there if you look hard enough. All that for free. <laughs> exactly. Mm. You've just got to look hard. I think these are the people though, that make the excuses. They blame everybody else for the, the, how their life is. They make excuses. And it's like, listen, you've got to take some responsibility, some accountability. You can at any point in your life pick up something you want to do passionately. You've just got to be willing to do it. And well, that's what it is. Really... Well, it's easier for those to learn, as you say, that their, their mind's like a sponge. Yeah. Because at that age, you're into really good habits. So you know you go to bed on time and you you get up for school you know, and you've got a routine and a routine is so important learning and you're learning in like a couple of hours at a time and you take everything in um, yeah uh, if i had some advice like to give myself back in the day i would say like jump on youtube as soon as it was like the 2012 2013 era maybe even before that you know because back then it was it was so much easier to grow oh uh, dude I, yeah. I always say the same thing as well the only difference is back then i was in fetal development but the, like you know i would love to go back because like think about it right all of us now we're all pretty well like known when it comes to the youtube aspects yeah what to yeah. do. We, we've got our own personalities we've got our own build our brand etc but it's so evolved now to the point where it's so much harder like if we did this 10 year, 10 years oh, ago we, we would be on top I, you know, I, I sometimes just sit there and just dream, you know, like, I, you know, obviously we can't, but like, dude, if I could time travel, if I could go back to, to YouTube came out in 2005, if I could, back, if I could go back, I would go if back I could to... go back as the age I am right now with everything I know, and I'm sure it's the same for you guys, well, go back as the age I am right now, everything you know, all the knowledge that you've, that you've obtained, right, and go back to when you were born, my God, 
my god, I swear, I like, I would dominate YouTube, you know what I'm saying? But that's the thing, nowadays YouTube's at a different platform, there's millions of people every year, millions of new content creators appear, and that's why it becomes an even more difficult hill to climb up. Um, it's about longevity though, that's what it is though. So you might not be there today, but yeah. you will get there, especially if you're pers uh, persistent with it. Yeah, that's the thing, like, if anyone comes on my stream and they ask me like, how you get started? And you know, how do you grow? How do you get, you know, a thousand subs, 10 subs, 100 subs? You need to start mm -hmm. because it's only going to get more difficult. And oh yeah, it might, it might be hard at first, but just start, just get going. Well, that's it. It's I mean, that's it. it don't make excuses. Just get going. I mean, that's, that's exactly it. procrastination. Yeah, that that's exactly it. very much so. It, it's exactly that, man. It's you know, if you you if you 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 know if you want to do YouTube, start today. But oh, I want to get. I want to make sure I know what I'm doing. Start. Even just get started. Even if you're or, uploading yeah. absolute rubbish you know, and a lot of it, potato. it's learning. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's exactly. And there's, yeah. you know, there, there's power in being able to experience things. Like for us with the Forgotten Podcast, you know, we've uh, we went through, and I'm not trying to just bring this all back to us, but it's, you know, we went through so many different eras of the show. You know, episodes, we call it seasons, right? So at the season one, episodes, obviously one to 10, we didn't even know what we were doing. It was kind of more we're just finding ourselves. We're talking about subjects and we're kind of Funding maybe considering feet, interviewing people. It's just yeah, we're, it was just more brand. establishing ourselves. And then at season two, which was, you know, like obviously episode 10 to 20, that was more us, and really it was episodes 10 to 19, right? That was more us kind of developing our, like, like honing in our craft and kind of finding how we wanted to record the episodes and what was best for us. And that's where we discovered Streamlabs and whatnot, or Stream, uh, excuse me, it's not Stream, yeah, it's Stream Yard, excuse me. I always say Stream and, Labs. Yeah, Stream Labs, imagine. But like, um, but like the end of the day, and then now obviously season three, which is obviously this season now, you know, episodes, nine, I'd say 20, obviously 20 to 30, we've just now been honing in our craft and really, again, just re rebuilding the brand of this channel. And that's really what this is. And kind of fixing mistakes of the past. And, but that's the, the main point is though, is it's just to get started. Don't put it off. Don't go, oh, well, I gotta wait till things are perfect, till the stars are aligned, till everything's in right. They're never gonna happen. Nothing's ever gonna be perfect for you to get started. And if you keep thinking like that, you're never gonna get started. By the time you eventually maybe do get started, it's gonna be tenfold harder. And you could have been tenfold, you know, further in and from. But it's just about getting yourself going and getting the, getting the ball rolling. That's really and what video, it always is. Video creation has never been so easy. I mean, anyone who's oh, got yeah. a, PS, a PS4, PS5, you can stream on those, you know, and it's, it's, so, it's, it's phenomenal. Like a five minute setup. Like on but PS3, I mean, you'd have to get all the, the software. You already have it at your fingertips. I, and that's for us, I, sorry. Oh, you can see. Uh, you know, where I started streaming because I thought, I've got this uh, yeah. streaming software built into the console and I'm playing games anyway, so why not stream it? <laughs> Well, that's exactly, you know, I've said to so many people, listen, you know, I started in 2010, 2011 when I was a little kid, 10 years old, right? I started using my BlackBerry phone. Remember the old Blackberries? you'll probably remember Shed, right? The, the old Black, this was back in a different era of BBM, etc. right? It, it's but weird because before, I started before we go into this quickly, I want to say though, um, I've got very similar stories, but it's so yeah. interesting to see the conflict between the two time eras. Oh yeah, it was very different with different content uh, yeah which yeah is well, really for, interesting for me when i started we were using blackberries and i used to just you know Watch sit and record BBM my phone uh, what, what, oh yo i don't even know me back in the day you're know, saying oh man i miss bbm that was i was using a Samsung like s4 it's very i, I remember i remember still. like this is this is an error i remember you know again using blackberries and then eventually getting a samsung tablet and then using that and having the old, like, you know, having to hold up and aim it at the screen. Up. Yeah, having to stand up and be like, is this right? Is this good? And it was it was terrible, ter terrible quality. But it was that that allowed me to kind of build this character, can't manage, and also build my commentary skills. Because I spent years just with nobody watching, speaking and getting good at being able to speak and being able to keep conversations and do what I do. And then eventually when I did get good equipment, I was able to work further and get faster. Um, I mean, I've told this story before. When I when I first got my PlayStation 4, you know, I, I always said to myself, it was just good equipment that I needed, and I would be able to get to the top. As soon as I got a PlayStation 4, right away, within two weeks, I, I went from like 300 subs to 500 subs. I gained over like 100,000 views. It was insane, and then my channel got terminated. And then I came back with this channel, my well, Cat Man Joe channel, and within a month, because of that, just sheer no, like just because I knew I would be able to do it, and I had the equipment, no excuses, nothing was holding me back, not you know, nothing was nothing was keeping me held up. Um, I just went full throttle and in a month I gained 1,000 subs and 100,000 views. And at that point, it was like I was earning money right away. You know, monetization was an option right away, straight off the back, back in 2017. So it, it's just about getting started. And it, it's, you know, knowing your equipment doesn't really limit you. You know what I'm saying? It's about just getting going. And it, like you said, now more than ever, you know, if you want to start YouTube, don't try and get a big expensive PC, monitors, everything like that. No, you don't have to be silly. Start basic. I if started with the trash head thing from there. You know, KSI and all these people. If you go back yeah. to the first video, it's literally filmed on, you know, a basic camera. You, you know, you're talking like 2010. 
you know, the graphics wasn't very good, the camera wasn't no. very good, but they started and look where they are now. You will do exactly. it all the time. You will buy new equipment. Yeah. Exactly, that. and things will get better. And it's it's that you know, it's that practice in private that makes you so good in public. You know, what I'm saying that's what it is. It's kind of like I remember there was a quote from Les Brown. It's something like, you know, people are often credited in public for what they practice for. Practice for years in private. You know, like mm -hmm. you look at actors and go, oh, he's amazing. I love him. But you don't know that he spent ten years practicing to be that good an actor. It didn't just yeah. come overnight. It takes a very long time to hone in your skill. And often people are not going to remember that you know the time when you were at your lowest or you're, when you were building up to become this amazing guy or this amazing character character but that's the point everybody has their own story with it and that's the beautiful part about it i mean when i started making content as well I used but it's to just about getting started i used to put on like this american accent like my i used to change the way i speak when i started and if you look back at those videos now i was like you're not really being yourself but after a while you get comfortable with it and you start to develop that that confidence yeah. So. I mean, that's it, man. It, it, everybody has to start somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And for me, I said, you know, it's it's with me. I started with Blackberries, recording trash quality. It was it wasn't great, man. It was I I show you the videos to this day. I sounded terrible, but it's I honed in my craft as well even better. That you say the the original. Sorry to cut you off again, but like um, I was looking at because I, I recently like I've always played Destiny. Um, I, I just got properly back into Destiny too. And mm -hmm. it made me realize when I started playing, I was like 13. This is like when I met Joe and before I met Joe. And um, the videos are still on my channel. Uh, yeah. Very privated. But I went back and watched them and it was so... I'm not embarrassed by it anymore. I'm past that point. But it's, yeah. it was almost really... It was really nice to see the difference in the content that I'm capturing now. I've got a bit of like Destiny gameplay just saved because I, I save raw gameplay just in case I need it in the future, etc. Just so yeah. I've got it. Um, and then I look back because I, I type in Destiny, you know, like you can type in YouTube Studio a title. Yeah, it's funny. I just type in Destiny and there's my old TV being filmed by the Samsung S4 um, oh, with God. my crappy little intro I threw together on, um, if you heard of Kai Kai Masters, like Kai a, Master. Kai Master, yeah. Say, yeah I mean. um, all of that stuff going is like Skyrim oh, music in the background. I'm like, <laughs> it's so awful. But. When you That's look at it. it, it's got every integral part to a video. An intro, yeah. commentary, gameplay, music. Not good. It, none of it is good. It is like looking at a cesspool. But other than that, it has the fundamentals to build an actual good foundation. And that's from yeah. there to there, you know? It's a good, exactly. good way that's of it. seeing improvement. But that's the way you just have to build upon that. That's what happens. Like for me, you know, people, uh, I, I get people that say, oh, you don't sound that Scottish. You know, you sound quite either English or kind of American. A lot of people say that to me in my streams. They say, you know, you can hear the accent partially. And I even get people that my, my father's friends who are Scottish and they sound very broad, you know? Oh, hi, yeah, you know, this and that. They're very broad kind of Scottish. And they go, you know, Stephen Joseph, he, does, he sounds English, right? And I'm like... And you say like he sounds English. he doesn't sound Scottish. The reason why is because I tried to drop the accent as much as I could. It's still there partially, but I've I've really dropped it. If you hear another Scottish person speak, like if we were side by side, you're going to hear a complete difference. I, I'd say because it's just I tried to drop a lot of the vocabulary that was from Scottish. Yeah, it, it, that's it. I wanted to become more accessible to everybody. You know, when you speak very fast and you've got an accent. It's hard to understand what you're saying. So I, to, I over the years, from the age of 11 all the way up to now 21, I've had to continuously try and drop the accent. But it, again, it's all about just working at it. You know what I'm saying? I, I love this as well, because I saw your um, Vine compilation come up yesterday. Yeah. I gave that a watch, and I was like, God damn. Like, it, it, I see the resemblance in everyone that I've met, yeah. like their, their evolution in like, yeah. content. Well, especially for me, when I when I done Vine, you can you can see me at 15, and that was six years ago, seven years ago can, now. You can hear the difference in your voice as well. Yeah. Yeah, and that's well. I mean, I remember saying to Especially Joseph, you know, like, you know, pre eighteen. Yeah, yeah. You, you think like, I remember? I can watch videos of my own channel from back in two thousand and seventeen when I started this one, our Cam and Joe. And um, you know, you think, oh, I didn't sound that different. And then you hear it, and you go, but you hear it. Yeah, you go, yeah. I do sound different. And, and then you it's just like, start cringing. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, this wasn't good. You know what I'm saying? I uh, know. It was. It was one of those things, man. And it's but, annoying because you know, in like five more years, it's gonna happen again. It's gonna change like, again. Oh, my voice yeah. is fine, but it's not. You know. So you yeah. probably hear me a lot different how I hear me, which is bizarre because oh, yeah. now I'm going to realize, oh dear, I did sound like a literal child. <laughs> but you there know. you go. Well, going on to the next question, are you a morning person or a night person? I'm definitely a night person. <laughs> Good man. And I think that, that's born from uni because I always used to like, like working at night. Um, you know, I like to work on all my essays just in peace. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, you know, I've been working night shifts for like two or three years. So you kind of have to be a night person. I yeah, hate well, I've got... <laughs> I hate waking up early. Oh, no, nah, man. So, I mean, what time do you start work normally, like for the night shift? Is it like 
Um, so at night shifts, so what I do is I wake up at 4 p.m. <laughs> oh and then God. I get ready. So I have a bath wash every night. I set yeah. out at 6, get there for 8, uh, and then work right. till 8 a.m. the next day. And God, then have an hour to get back and then sleep again, 4 p.m. So it's a killer. Oh, God, I <laughs> can imagine it. Uh, you sleep for a full night the first night off. And then the next night, you're back to a normal sleep schedule, or you wake up at like 2. Oh, no, that would fling me off. That, that would mess me up. Night, you know, you have to readjust again because you have oh. to get back to the night shift sleep pattern. God, that, it's, not it's really what. Your body. I was going to say, is it is it hard? Like for like whatever you're doing for the night shift, is it just is it hard? What... Uh, well, for a while, like, is it just kind of not too bad? Now, so all night I've been running around with boxes. Oh, but at the moment, oh, um, I work in a student accommodation, so I still work with students. Um, probably all around cynic page actually in that 18 yeah 19 you know so um so mainly sit at the desk but then after the stuff around the building like if students get locked out or anything like that like i'm kind of oh. a bit of every job yeah so me, old man, you know whatever yeah whatever I'm doing but then you know sometimes it can be not so busy you'll sit there watching youtube Oh, it's, well, it's not too bad. I do kind of like it to be quite hectic because you get a bit bored, and when it's night shift, you can sometimes fall asleep because I'm one of the only people there. So oh, I'm so you've not got someone people. beside you working with you, kind of thing, like, like keeping up. Also, oh god, <laughs> darn. Like, you know, yeah, pass out. <laughs> oh no. I say, well, fair enough, fair enough. The next question, I feel like we're going to get a very interesting answer here. What is the strangest habit you have? You already told us during the break a little bit, and I can't believe that. I'm still, I can't lie to you, Shad. I'm still hurt. You know what I'm saying? I, you can tell us here, though. Um, so I don't like hot drinks. I like cold drinks and hot meals. So I never drink tea, never drink coffee. And it's so bad <laughs> because it's like when I was in hospital last week, they kept saying, do you want a cup of tea? Do you want a, do you want a coffee? Do you want a hot chocolate? Do you want any of this? I'm like... No, no thanks. And they just think I'm being rude, but then I have to explain to them, I'm like, I don't like hot drinks. <laughs> God dang. You're messing up, man. I'm gonna love tea. I'm gonna it's love strange coffee. for a British person, I think. So what what is your favorite cold drink then? If you don't have tea or coffee. <laughs> cold tea. It's <laughs> terrible because it's a monster. I love monsters. Oh dude, oh, I've got into the habit and it's not fun. I'll, I'll drink like two or three a day and I'm like, I gotta stop because I I know it's terrible for your kidneys. Um, yeah, I've heard it. Yeah, it can be yeah, quite bad. You, you want you want to see my uh, my my kidney killer? <laughs> like, I've been logging it because I'm a bit of a health maniac, but I keep all the caps. <laughs> oh my god! So that's how damaged my oh, liver is right now. In like, a, in like a couple of days. I mean, <laughs> I've only started my monster yeah, addiction. Apex ones. Like, you got your apex skins. Yes, is what I've been doing. Yeah, Joseph. <laughs> honestly, funny enough, you say that. The other day, you had a can, and he was like peeling off the thing. Like, like, what was it? Was it peeling off, or how did you do it? it just it's the ring cap. There's codes. That on was it. Yeah, and you were cap. getting it. And he was getting the apex. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, it's apex codes. I'm not actually put them in, you know, because I've got, I've had so many of them. Give and them I to me. <laughs> Look, just I've got an apex of sixty. Any, anyone? I'm sorry, but I'm hijacking. Anyone that has Monster Energy Apex one, just send me the code. <laughs> Twitter, please. <laughs> I need what is stuff. Anyway, I feel terrible. Oh, I was gonna say, what do you guys do with them when you get the code? Like, what, like, what is it? Uh, what is you put them onto the Apex X Monster website, and you basically you create an account on that, and then after you put in so and so amount of codes, you then get another code which you can put on on Apex, and then it will give you something. Oh, so okay. it consists of like different skins, uh, badges, and uh, like just little bits like that, just to, because it's exclusive stuff, and it's like yeah. it ends in March, I believe. So you got March yeah. to collect. 60 of them but oh wow you know, only oh, 45 wow. of them is are that really what got you into the honest. monsters huh is that what got you into the monsters, I say uh, monsters it, I it like wasn't it's, it's actually my um technically mother-in-law um i don't want to say her real name just for privacy but um yeah. she she has it a lot and she gave me one and i was like all right why not i'll try it and i just i was like this is really good and also plus i'm an apex addict this works completely when and, you're streaming as well and, yeah it, yeah. it's such a good kick as well and it's like it's not even like because I, I love the whole code stuff but i'm at that point now when my friends at college i got my this mate called ollie he comes in like stoned half the time i love him he's great but he came in stoned and he was just like smiling and he went joe i got you a um a ring cap for apex code <laughs> and he was like buzzing about it and i'm like thank you man. i gave him a hug I, I don't hug anyone but i knew if i did that it would freak him out because he's stoned and i don't oh hug my people God. And he was just sitting there like, Joe gave me a hug. And he was there for like half an hour buzzing about it. 
and it's oh like my one of my God. favorite memories of him. It's great. Uh, it, why am I sound like he's dead? I saw him today, but like you know, he he's, he's really he's gone. I love him for that. Rest in peace. You say be with him. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm oh. trying. I'm trying to cut back on that, so I start drinking like Sneak at work and stuff. Like Sneak is so good. I heard Sneak's really good. I've never heard of like that. Beef, it's, it's like a powder, powder drink, isn't like it? Powder energy drink. All right. Well, okay, I've never heard of that before. But I, I don't fuel, know if it's in Scotland. I'm not, I've never seen it. Oh, it's advertised everywhere. It's it's it does, very it heavily advertised like squash, on Instagram. But it does keep you awake, like mm -hmm. more than a monster does, because I feel like I've become kind of immune to monster. <laughs> uh, I feel like I've become immune to the caffeine. So it is blood. It's, it's not good as well because, like, last episode I kept freaking out because, like, I was with Joe and I was like, "There is cocaine in this thing." Like, <laughs> no, I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sitting drinking and going. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's definitely not good. I think I drink okay, it. More it's all official as. <laughs> oh god, I drink man. it more for the taste these days. I think. Well, I mean, that's not. what I do it for anyway. I make sure I don't have one like every day. You guys are both addicts. I always try and space that out by three days. So at least. You guys are both addicts. That's what. Like, you can get addicted to energy drinks. I've been so yeah. addicted to anything. Like, really, really addictive. God, see, I don't, I don't drink fizzy juice. So I'm, I'm, I'm innocent here. Well, I don't drink do I. Any That's the juice. only thing. Like, like before that, I never really drank. Like, I like the Dr Pepper every now and then, but that was like once a year. But now, yeah, it's I, like, I, I like, yeah, I like the odd, uh, the odd drink in the summer, in, in the British summer when it's nice and hot. Nothing wrong with getting a nice kind of juice from the store. And it's slightly less gone because obviously I don't drink the hot drinks, so I have to get uh, my Stop somewhere. boiling your monster. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And water's too bland, and milk's man, milk's alright, yeah. but that's for sure. Oh, sure. I hate when people say water is bland. You can't like you are eighty something percent water. Like get all. Yeah, I'm, I'm drinking taste, myself. It don't say it. that. That's a soft one. Oh no, you said. Don't look God dang. Up. All right. Well, going to the next one. What is one thing we would never guess about you? Hmm. Tough one. I mean, I'm really big into Doctor Who. I'm a huge uh, Doctor yeah, Who yeah. fan. Your first ever video, right? <laughs> Doctor yeah, Who video. Yeah, Collection. Doctor Who DVDs. The and I actually thing, switched man. my content up because I used to... My brother actually got me into Minecraft. The first time I played it, I couldn't place a torch. I couldn't really? Do anything. I couldn't even look up. Like, I was so bad at Minecraft. And then he used to do these streams. And he used to just like give up halfway through or say, like, oh, I can't be bothered today. And I thought... You know what? I'm gonna do that myself, and I'm gonna surpass my little brother. <laughs> my little oh. brother's 18 now, but that's All what right. got me into making the Minecraft videos. And I think within oh. like a few weeks, I was growing like massively. God dang! Uh, so wait, does does he still stream? He doesn't know. He's just started uni. He's actually doing the same thing as me, which is oh okay, that's weird. good. Because brothers and sisters normally go in opposite directions. Yeah. Um. So it's quite, it's quite strange, but yeah, that's why I actually switched to the Minecraft. I thought, you know. I'm gonna give it a go myself. <laughs> and you, you're I, now I a god of it. Videos because sometimes I like to look back at them, and I've actually mm -hmm. thought about doing an, another one of those, like an updated version, which I yeah. probably will do at some point just for a laugh. I know it's gonna annoy people because my content <laughs> is so varied sometimes. But I, I had to I had to think about it lately, and I thought like my channel is still so it's still small in the grand scheme of things. So why not? Mm -hmm. you know, Try different things out and play around. You know, there's no need to lock yourself in. Throw everything at the wall, see what sticks. So That's right it. now, I'm trying not to focus on the views when I make those other little videos. Like yeah. If they get 10 views, as long as I'm happy with it. That's then, all that matters. You know, that's what I do. So I encourage people, if you've, if you've only got a small amount of subs, don't feel like you have to stick to one thing. I know it, it is good to help you grow. And when, once you have like an established audience, like I kind of do it at the moment, but I think you know you don't have to stick yourself in a box you yeah yeah you don't have to confine yourself to one specific thing you can especially when you're a smaller content creator or even still upcoming even when you're a big content creator you should still just try new things and see how it goes because you never know you could be right just like a, a flick away from finding the best thing ever is something that's even better for you or that might work better for you so it's good to kind of test your audience and see what you can get away with and what you can't definitely at least in my opinion. But let me see. It's going to go this year, right? So for the last question of the Forgotten Seven, have you ever had a nickname? And I get you kind of already said this, right? Um, and if so, what was it? So I feel like we've kind of already answered this one, right? Yeah, most people call me Mitch. And then obviously people that know me from YouTube, they call me Shed. Yeah. Um, I used to just have a channel with my normal name, but everyone knew about it. Um, oh. So I created another channel because I created this rap song when I was in like year seven. And it was very oh. gay. Why is this a common theme? And I <laughs> used to sing it everywhere. I used to sing it everywhere, but I, didn't, I waited till I was in sixth form. Um, right. So I did put it out and I put it on YouTube and it went viral around the whole school. It had like 10k views or something in like a month. 
And they, what? Like, they kept playing it everywhere I went. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to create a new channel. I'm going to start again. And I'm going to, you know, give myself a Was nickname. it overwhelmingly negative then? Because that sounds like a vibe. Being the it wasn't rapper. negative, bro. I was like, what have I done? Like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't need all the attention. So but I already <laughs> called myself Shedwards on the PS3. Um, oh, right. Yeah. I, I kind of made that nickname because that's, that's how I got my YouTube name as well. Um, yeah. My second name's Edwards and Shedwards kind of matched. And one of my maths teachers once said that, oh, I can just imagine him being in the shed making all, you know, inventions and stuff, inventing stuff. So I thought Shedwards. Yeah. So when I got my PS3, I named myself that. Um, so I kind of created my channel name slash nickname. A lot of people also call me Shady Boy as well, and <laughs> they kind of come up with their own their own nicknames. Shady Boy is a good one. Earlier. <laughs> no, fair enough, fair enough. It's actually funny, right? That, and I, I think Joseph knows, right? That you just said what you just said because the next question, Joseph, you want to read it? Oh, you want me to go for it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I... <laughs> uh, That's what I'm saying. We we end up we banned for that much that we 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 end up going over Where stuff did that you we get your name from. We're so meta. But uh, so transitioning from talking about you becoming question. a father and the Forgotten Seven, we wanted to talk about something a bit more personal and really talk about the name Shedwards. And I thought it'd be a great question to start with is to ask why and how you got this name and what is the history history behind it? Flawless. Yeah, so I, I think I've just uh I think I've just get, given it you that. Yeah. I think I subconsciously said that just because I knew the question was coming because I've been watching yeah. the for a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah thank it was, you. Uh, it's a combination of a few things. And back in the day, when you had the PS3, the PS3 days, you always used to use the underscores. Yeah, because I, I always wonder why your name had that. And for so for so long, I've been thinking to myself, should I get rid of the underscore? I'm like, I'm just gonna keep it a little bit longer, as, <laughs> you know, because it's kind of unique. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people go with that kind of like mentality. Like Joseph here, has, well, I had his own one, name two, three, three, three name. Yeah, and that, has yeah. Well, every everybody everybody has, especially it's so funny, man, because we're all in the same kind of boat, right? Everybody has that kind of username from online, like PlayStation, Xbox, etc. Like you said, yours was Shed, was with the underscore. That's why I use it on YouTube. Mine's was Catman Joe. Two thousand and thirteen was my first gamer tag, so that was my actual first YouTube channel name. That's my Catcast channel now. Technically, that was my original first ever proper YouTube channel outside of my dad's, right? Um, and then Joseph's was Curious Apple one two three, and then like I was just one. It's it's weird, right? I was like, that's what it is. It's it's so odd. People have like the numbers and yeah, the names or things. Forever. Yeah, and that's it. You know, uh, Joseph eventually <laughs> he just edited one two three. There you go. I, I remember because Joe just came through one like, like I, I, as per usual a barrage of messenger voice messages saying, "Hey bro, how you doing, man?" And, and then it would always go into a conversation, right? And, I, and this was normal. And I was like, you know what? This is revolution. This is back when I had a Minecraft profile photo, um, which I paid five pounds for from a very trustworthy source. And um, basically, what happened was Joe just goes, "Dude, you, you are the curious hippo." And, and man, my ego never exploded like the way it did that day. You know what? Just this thirteen-year-old, like, you know, I'm the shit. Like, just <laughs> sitting there, and it's so good. I, I, it's, it was an interesting name. I think though, having the numbers in your name can be a little bit like that's thing, like with the dash in yours. I would say, like, personally, I'd say at least, I know, I, I'd say you should remove it because then it's just shed words. But then I get why you want to have that underscore because of the history behind it. It makes yeah, it more I'll unique. One day, you're going to go on the channel and it's not going to be there. <laughs> be sad. F in the chat for the little underscore. But the same. When I think about it now, I think I didn't really think it through because shed words was never meant to be. When I created my name, I wasn't thinking of being a YouTuber back in those days, you know, like 2008 when I had the PS3, like YouTube. Yeah. I wish it was on my mind then. Don't get me wrong. Like, I wish I could yeah. start then, but now when i'm creating merch and stuff like there's there's nothing that goes with shed foods apart from sheds and yeah i don't want to put sheds on i don't want to put shed to be fair, i do like the second it. half of your name the, what the words yep yeah. Yeah. as one of the words i gotta say it's a good name yeah i've, I've been I, working with the s lately but i do have merch with shed on but i don't want to i don't want to be so blatant that i just put a picture of a shed on a t-shirt because that you know, <laughs> Just a big old shed. That's, That's a big idea for a video for a while as well because people used to call me shedies, or I used to call my family shreddies. shedies. So what, I'm, what I might do is get some shreddies, you know, shredded. Oh, and yeah. I'm edit the packaging. I'm going to redesign it, and I'm going to I'm going to stick it on the front, and I'm going to put more into little sheds. You would get sued like, into oblivion. <laughs> That's gonna get sued. No, but I think that'd be actually an interesting concept. I've seen like your your channel logos or uh, your channel your memory badges. Excuse me, uh, emojis. Yeah. Isn't one of them a shed? There's like a tin of beans. There's like a few other different. Like oh no, I, it's I was in there and I was like, there's a tin of beans. Like I sat honestly, genuinely, I clicked on it. Well, I looked and I went, I'm, 
I might see something. Because they all have a history behind them. So sometimes if people, you know, back in the day when I first got, well, probably like a year ago when I first got it, I was just playing about. So there was a person called Ducky in there. So I made him a rubby duck because he was always there. And then my friend George, who's always in my streams, we went to uni together, so we get on really well, like, and he's always in my streams. Um, mm. And when he when he starts off a, a podcast or like a video, he always goes beans, beans, beans to test the microphone. <laughs> so I gave him a frog and some beans. Oh my god! <laughs> the frog actually comes from his Twitch because his Twitch is a uh, Kermit the Frog. So that was actually oh, George's amount. That also that. feels like copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the beans. I can't be Kermit. No, oh, yeah, Kermit's yeah it a bond. wasn't. I didn't actually take Kermit, like you know, uh, <laughs> just a basic. Some like off brand. <laughs> but the beans, I actually rubbed out the Heinz logo. So I went in Photoshop and I blurred that out. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, and then I might, you know, I changed the style of it. All right, yeah. So it's S dot copyright, which just changes the can just slightly. So it's yeah. beans, but it ain't Heinz beans. But I, I, I could have, I could have just drawn the beans and like you know done it that way. But I was a bit lazy because because uh, those badges weren't really for out. I must admit. Yeah, it was just it was just kind of for it's for the memes, you know, it's for the community. I I kind of done the same with mine. Like it was just more memes. I like I, I mean, there's still one still remaining, which is the oh god why, and it's a photo of the cat crying. It's still one of my badges, my member things. It's the only one I've got to replace. We've got these different cat characters. Uh, the, the fantastic artist herself, Reese, made for me. I uh, got love her. You know what I'm saying? She's done an amazing job with it. So um, like we've got all those in one, but we've got one space available. But it's still just a meme. We keep it. We used to have the the Dorito as well. Like I love Dor Doritos are the best thing ever, in my opinion. The, uh, on nice Twitch, best. It allows people to have a bit of fun with it, you know, with the memes. Yeah, of course. It's nice. It adds more for the community, you know what I'm saying? It's more like of a deeper meaning for the community. You know, I'll be in the middle of a, a stream. It might be a serious stream, and I'll just see people spamming beans, you know. <laughs> it's just like spamming tens when of beans. I got gifted a sub on Joe's um, channel. I've Twitch, just been yeah. spamming Jason for, like, the past, like, month. Yeah, I, I got, got a Halloween profile photo, and it was uh, Jason Voorhees, right? But it was, like, a cat version. It's really cool. It's really cool. Like, I love it, right? But, like, it's a little bit, like, Joseph loves it as well, because his, his favorite thing is Jason. So, it's, it's like, it is what it is. Where does your profile picture come from? You know, your character, is that from Call of Duty Zombies? Wait, the, wait, who, mind who? the cat, or it says? Mass in it, because it feels, oh. you know, the yellow guy in uh, Cod Zombies Cold War? It reminds me of that guy. It's probably not. Um, it, my my um my avatar is is, is he's always been like my own sort of character. <laughs> the only the only thing that's really like it's been influenced by multiple series. It's it, it's always been my character, but I've always kind of like pushed him in the direction of other games and that just because of the yeah. things that I enjoy and I want it to represent what I like me etc. But um a lot of people don't actually know this. I know you didn't ask this, but I just want to add this on top of it as well because it's an interesting thing that a lot of people didn't know. But my character has a name and it's not Joe. Um, but my, I'm not going to say your name because I, w I want that to be something I talk about in the future. But um, see, there so you go, cool. cliffhanger. But it is That's very right. heavily inspired by Ghost Runner, uh, right. also Destiny One and Two, and also just Apex as well. So because like it's like um, the axe is inspired from Friday the Thirteenth. I used to have an original photo which was me with my arms crossed. It was one that it was my original. Without the mask type thing, it's like um, the difference between the photos. There's obviously different artists, but the difference is he's put the mask on, so it's a bit more different. Yeah, the uh, mask the is more purple. Uh, but overall, the whole idea was it's just like it's a bit of a cyberpunk sort of character, mixing with a bit of Friday the 13th because they're just the two sort of things I really like. Because I used to have a fire axe in my backpack, and that was like the, the main thing. And I was like, you know what? Mm. I love my axes, I love my weaponry, etc. I thought I'll just make it a cyber axe, and it's just, I love it. It's beautiful. There you go. Yeah, that's the thing about copyright, though. Like, in this day and age, it's, it's hard to be original because everything you can think of is always influenced by what come before. Oh, I definitely agree. It's like uh, my, my avatar was in the m making and it's changed constantly for like the past like five years. So yeah. it's, not, it's definitely not easy to just be like, I know what I want because your mind it's changes like, constantly. When I do things at uni, like I've done this written projects and I, I was just writing it. And it was about like a robot in the future or something. It was like really random. It was actually a comic book I was writing. This is such a me conversation. I love this. And then I got halfway through and I realized I'm writing Terminator. <laughs> I'm going to rethink this because it sounds, it's exactly how Terminator was, but that's where. Oh, you, no. On, on a similar think. sort of story, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Overwatch at all. No. I'll, okay, I'll, well, I'll on, in Overwatch, there every Halloween, obviously, you, know, you get events in games. There's one called Junkenstein's Revenge, where it's based the story of Frankenstein 
but told through Apex, uh, not Apex characters, Overwatch characters, and it's got like its own plot twists, etc. I remember in an English exam, we had to write our own story, and I, and, and this is not like an accident, I, I rewrit the story. Um, oh my God. And I passed. <laughs> so, what? It was good. It was so good. GG. Because, yeah, it's, it's, but I know what you mean. It, it's so hard to be so diverse with your thoughts to the point where it's like, that's not been done before, because it has. It's well like, well, go to the nearest thing. Yeah. Mm. It's like multiple times I've been like thinking about my design and just the way I want to use my character in upcoming um, art animations, etc. And I'm like, this is basically Watch Dogs. So, oh you know, my it's, God. it's so hard to break from it. It's like even JK Rowling, you know, she took um, influences from, you know, Tolkien and, you know, other writers because it's almost impossible to be fully original. Uh, well, that's the thing, and it, there's nothing wrong with that. I think a lot of people get kind of misconstrued. Not I'm all really people. I think a lot of us. Inspiration yeah, I think and people, plagiarism yeah, are two very two different two very things. different things. Yeah, you know, if you're just copying one for one, that's an issue. But if you're if you're especially if you're you drawing know, a table, if you're taking yeah, oh yeah, that's the story for us. But we uh we we had an artist who we used to work with a long time ago. Uh, I'm not gonna say her name. I will. I'm gonna say yeah. her name. Her name is Sarah. Oh, I was right gonna. But I, I was gonna be like. Mm. But yeah, like, it is what it know, is. Just, mm, but she was yeah. she was a cool she was cool you know chill and whatnot. She done the artwork for the original podcast logo, and uh, she done the original. If you watch the first episodes of podcast, there's like an animation that was done that was by her and whatnot. But we had a big dispute with her, and it caused us all to fall out. Like not all us, me and Joseph were chill, and Bradley and I were good and whatnot. Same with Joseph, but it was a bit weird. But it was because she didn't like us giving her uh, the kind of like I guess uh, what's the word? And what inspiration we gave her picks as references. Like that's kind of what we want. You know what I mean? And the reference was the was us three characters, me, uh, Septic Spud, and, and obviously Massinic, of course, sitting around a table. And it was kind of like you were looking from this perspective here and they were around a table here. And I took the inspiration from an Adventure Time episode where it's uh, one episode, one thing, Adventure Time, I love the show, and it's called uh, Jake, a brick in a wall or something like that. And it's where Jake and uh, or, or Finn, uh, Finn and this other guy, this Bean and Adventure Time are sitting around a table. I just took the image and went, hey, like, like I want that kind of that kind of angle of like where the shot would be. We wanted and the round table, issue. you know, like, like the whole like idea. I was trying to, I was uh, yeah, it was, I was, I was mad. I've got it framed. Yeah. I've got like a picture. Of it, it was honestly, it was mad, and she took c complete issue with it. She says, "This is terrible. I won't do it." I said. Like, it was page? literally, and I'm not even like any quiz, but like a bent circle. That's all it had to be. Yes, it was like I just so have... for my camera. It was just like literally that. Yeah, just a little circle, like a half moon, yeah, and then she might, she might be an artist who always sticks to the same kind of designs and cards. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love working with cool. artists. Like a lot of them are amazing, but some of them, they, their morals is really bizarre to me. Well, I mean, for her, it was like she. We were giving her references, and we're like, we we want this. This is what we're looking for, and she was like, no, I can't. I won't do it. Like, what do you mean? Oh, I just know. Like, it, it's it, it's the same. I'm like, it's not the same. We're just right. looking for. I, we just. I, it's again. It's a table. It's, it's. How else can we show you or explain what we're trying to explain? Like, if I try and explain to you, we want a table with us sitting around it. You might draw something that isn't what we're actually envisioning. You know what I mean? So it's that's why we give references. And she, yeah, it just it was one of those things. But it, it's mad. There's a big difference though, between taking inspiration to copying straight up. Like, there's a big difference, you know. And there's I think when big, you put your own spin, there's a problem with that on YouTube as well, isn't there? Straight copies. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people that just outright they remake someone's content and that that's it. It's complete plagiarism. It sucks. And it can be also difficult to work with. But a lot of people go, oh, you should just, you know, like, you know, you should just kind of like, I, I know in general, what's it called? Uh, you should just, you know, give credit and that's it. Or you should just try and like, kind of, I guess, copyright them if they're copying you. It's not that easy. Stuff like Minecraft. So I used to do C showcases on Minecraft. Um, if somebody uses my seeds and I, I don't like that, I can't do anything. It's kind of like you can't really cooperate them. It's not your intellectual property. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what you say is that gaming it's one as thing. a total. It's like yeah. really, it's really like a big gray area. And I remember that's been said a lot by a lot of different YouTubers, etc. It says a guest yeah. we wanted to get on, which sadly we're gonna have to postpone that episode. But the guy that we want to get on, very close friend of mine, and uh, he got striked for uploading gameplay by the company eight times purely because they didn't like what it was uploading because technically yeah. yes it is their property but it is also fair use but because they're the corporate company they're going to win they can do that. whatever you can't really yeah. fight I, think, I think if you make a game or something like that though um i think once you put it out into the world it's it becomes you know, public property public to do what they want yeah with. it's like it's like minecraft it's like you know it's, it's kind of it'd be unreal if tomorrow everybody just started getting told no no you can't play minecraft on camera what like uh, yeah, it, it's for the public. It's oh, but if you make they, a video criticizing Minecraft, game, you can't use the gameplay. Not play. too long ago, it, I think it was like last year or the year before. But I think it was a Persona game. I never played it, but 
um, Lucy's very much into her persona. But I remember there was a thing at the time where they were like striking and banning people for streaming at like, the end of the game. Per year, it was like, you know, overhyped and everyone yeah. wanted to like stream it. Yeah, it's absurd, honestly. But on the topic of rebranding, Joseph actually put it in there, but it was something, so perfect. I had to. I, I, it was, it was perfect. Somewhat recently, uh, you know, you rebranded your channel with some fresh new artwork, which may I just say looks very good. It, it looks and actually feels like, at least in my opinion, a natural evolution of the previous artwork. It feels like kind of the evolved version. I don't know if you'd agree with that. But seeing you update your channel art got me thinking. And I, I was wondering, you've been producing content for now six years, almost seven, of course. And in that time, you've not only played, but also streamed a massive catalog of games, including but not limited to Minecraft, Fortnite, The Forest, Apex Legends, Spider-Man, COD, Assassin's Creed, Spyro, Monopoly, Until Dawn, Crash Bandicoot, and so, so, so much more. But I wondered if you've ever considered going back through all that older catalog of content and I guess remaking and retitling stuff, you know, or not remaking, but more like adding thumbnails to it or remaking thumbnails for them and retitling them or more easily kind of cataloging them in a much more easily presentable kind of, I guess, way, you know? Well, I think if I did that, I think that'd be a lot more successful. I think back in the day, I didn't really spend a lot of time on the you know the tags or uh the thumbnails i think I, I spent a bit of time on them but i think that could be done a lot better like um you know the way my channel set out today i'm a lot more happy with it obviously yeah you know some things that still look a bit mixed up because that's kind of how my mind works you might see yeah a, you know, about playstation then you might see me building like a, a lego yoda or something. it's so <laughs> like random yeah um, but yeah i think that would be something cool to do uh maybe on a second channel or something but I, I haven't really I haven't really thought too much into it because I kind of think like those videos are in the past. I might go back and play those games again and maybe redo them, but we'll see. I get you, I get you. That's a fair that's a fair answer, man. That's a fair answer. Well there is definitely a lot of content to go around with, but I just wanna say I see from your extensive amount of content, you've played a variety of different games and on different platforms. And we kinda of briefed over this at the start and I was really happy that you shared this with us because this is one of the main things I realised when looking for your channel and I really wanted to speak about it. But I've realized you've got a lot of consoles. Like, how many consoles do you own? And also, if you have one, what one is your favorite and why? I think I've got about seven or eight. Jesus. Um, I'll probably say at the moment it is the PS5. Um, yeah, fair enough. That's a pretty Because it took me so long to get it and I had to pay an absolute <laughs> fortune for it because of Look, all it's oh. good. It's just, it was such a struggle. <laughs> like two years. But the thing is, PS5 has a lot of issues. I've, I've talked about this on, on my podcast, I think, with George. Um, you know it's not very accessible like the menus you have to click like 10 different things to get into a party um and there's loads of other issues it's just uh also the controller as well so the ps5 like dual shock it's yeah. got mm -hmm. built in where you got a built-in mic but right. you can turn that off and also it interferes with like any other headset you use that's not playstation it's like really dodgy like it echoes uh all sorts of stuff like that so it's I not like, like this this generation of consoles is really like forced to be honest because like yeah the ps5 to me isn't the ps5 it's the ps4.5 because yeah. it's just a better yeah. ps4 i don't it know feels I... Like they have a long way to go and i don't think anyone ever asked for a mic in the control no you know? it, like, it just feels a bit redundant man it, it's kind of like feel well insecure <laughs> Yeah, I, I was going to say, though, it's like, I, people have said to me, like, are you going to get a PS5? I'm like, I don't really need to. Like, I mean, yeah, like, it looks cool and all, but they're not really, I feel like it's taken anything to the next level. Like, I, I kind of had hoped, personally, right, because I used the PlayStation 4 built-on recording and streaming software for a long time and editing software. I had hoped that they'd upgrade that and take that to the next level. Like, for example, small change, but it would be a really big and good one, being able to record the home screen or being able to swap games during while you're streaming. Like, you'll know yourself, Shep, right? That one of the biggest flaws about PlayStation 4 streaming is that you could be streaming Minecraft and you go, I, I want to go play some GTA or something else. Can't unless you end the stream and then you can go play. Um, I so many issues with stuff like that. Dude, it's, it was horrible, man. And you know what's stupid? I, I hate, I don't hate, but the Xbox One, I, I got one eventually. I bought one a little while ago. Um, and I, I do dislike its recording and streaming software, but give them some credit. They did give you the option to record the home screen. You could close the game and it would give you like a, a weird kind of waiting screen. But the it, editing it would app let is you not bad it. either. The edit, it's not the as editing, good as Chef, actually. It's nowhere near as good as Chef, actually, in my opinion. The recording, being able to only record up to 50 minutes, not being able to record party chats, all of that is bad. But see that one feature of being able to record the home screen or being able to even get like a little screen that says just like give us a minute. You know what I mean? While it's switch games. Screen death as well on PS4. With oh. Cut you off in the middle of the game. So. Oh, it's horrible, man. Oh, it's like, can you, can you imagine how many times that would 
have been saved if we got a simple new edition of uh, the ability okay. to record your home screen. Like, why not? You're saying like, it's so stupid. It's, it's one of those things I never got. And it's like, you know, a share factory, if they're taking it to the next level, why not make a share factory on PlayStation 5, but make it better. Add audio graphs and so you can see when your audio spikes and when it goes down or like that's something that I personally always wanted. That's why I end up moving right to PC and using that now. Um, or being able to render videos for instead of an hour long, make it go up to two or three or four. Get up the I'm limit. Quite, I'm quite curious about what the streaming software is like on PS5. I was thinking about trying it out yesterday. Because sometimes mm. you have issues with your Elgato as well. Like this, these are the, you know, yeah. stream. I think you know things go wrong all the time. Yeah, so like, my Elgato just started playing up, and it, no matter how many times I plugged it in, it wouldn't work. No. Uh, so I was going to stream on the PS5. I thought like, why not give it a try, see what it's like. But in the end, I got the Elgato working. But I am curious to see. That could be a good little com like, like comparison video, actually. Yeah, like, to um... see the differences. I think honestly, I I've seen people stream the PS5. Now I'm kind of intrigued to see how how it all works fully because I'm like, okay, how does this look? How does the cameras look when you have face cam, etc.? Because I have the PlayStation camera on. I wonder if it's different on the PS5 if there's a higher level of quality. I'm sure there is. Like I know on the, the PlayStation Sorry. 4 Pro, you can get the uh, up to 1080p when you're streaming which is pretty cool I mean, like i can only go 720. the graphics they're so good like you can tell the difference yeah. in my streams when you look at them like fortnite especially like you can see the grass move and stuff like that and i never thought i'd see that on fortnite especially because it's like an animated type game but yeah it's so good and then also the 4k because i'm reading into my dvds you, mm. you know playing 4k on the ps5 just looks incredible so there is perks to it but I'd probably say in terms of like nostalgic consoles, it would either be the PS2 or PS3. Probably PS3 for functionality and PS2. Yeah. yeah. Because I think I, I spent my yeah. most time on those consoles. Like, you know, when you was a kid and you had no worries and you just sit there for hours playing games, you know, with the stories and Simpsons yeah. hit and run especially, like games like that. Don't so even, man. Run. That is a legendary yeah. game. I'm telling I'm you, man, the Simpsons hit run. That is an amazing game. I used to play uh, Burnout 3. I, I used to love the Burnout games. Burnout, Par Burnout Paradise I had on the Xbox, but um, Burnout 3 Takedown was my dad's favorite game on PlayStation 2, the racing game, and it was beautiful. I used to play it all the time as a kid. I want to make a video about it like called like Why Burnout 3 is the Best Game Ever. Like I'm going to at one point buy the equipment so I can actually stream the PS2 gameplay, you know, um, to my to my gato and get it on my PC. I'm going to make a video, a documentary-style video, why this is the best racing yeah, game of well, all time, because I think it is. I've bought all that stuff and I'm in the process of like putting them up. But every time I've tried playing it, like you do get frustrated. It's hard, like yeah, like your PS2, like to battle through that. You know the controller delay and yeah, it's so slow and things load really slow and look the yeah. delay in older games. Like, I think is the main thing that drives people away from playing older yeah. titles because mm -hmm. we bought a Sega Mega Drive a while back. And like right. my dad, it was so good at half the game, but I could not play it because it's like, man, it takes like ten days to get to the it's like console. Like half an hour, and you're like, I can't. I yeah, can't. <laughs> but I will. At it, some it's time. a different era. It, it's like it's like uh, for me, I, I got obviously the Elgato, and I went back to the Xbox 360 to play, you know, games like this, like Borderlands and whatnot. And I've got it on my PlayStation as well, but. It's so weird, you know, I think nostalgia kind of trips you up a little bit, like the rose tinted glasses, you know, because you'd be thinking, oh, the PlayStation 3 was the best. And then you go from the PS5 to the PS4 to the PS3 and you go, this is slow as hell. What is going on? Yeah, like for me on the on the Xbox, I used to think the menus were fantastic. I went back on it after being on the PlayStation menus. And I love the PlayStation 4 menus, like being able to just jump about. Oh. Um, and then I kind of acknowledged that I went, oh my God, this is so damn slow. Everything's old. What is happening here, man? I feel like there's some WD-40. This is ridiculous. There, there is one perk of the PS3, though. There's going to be a lot of kids this Christmas that are going to buy a game and they're going to sit there for Online. two days, install and everything on the PS3, plug it in, you're in. Yeah. I, did I remember, okay. this was on the 360, installing Far Cry 4. It took me a week. I'm not oh, actually joking. You know what's no. funny? I went on holiday. I came back and it was like, oh, I've got an hour left. And you know what? That hour Dude, I was no, staring man. at that screen, I, man. That's what I can hear about the new current like gen consoles. Like I'm not. I don't hate them, but it's like I hear we have to install every game. Like, I don't have the time nor the patience to get a game and they have to install it. Like, I remember back in the day, you could go to a game store with those old legendary things. You go to a game store, you buy a game, you take it home, and as soon as you get home, you put it in the oh, console and you can play it right away. Straight off the bat. Like, I used to I love that, remember the last time I've actually, like, purchased something in game. I thought I'd go in there, have a look, and then say, I'll buy that later. You know, I think it's... it was better. Even though even though stuff was usually overpriced in stores like HMV or Game, you guys know which ones I'm talking about. Mm. Like, they're normally overpriced, but it's like, there's a certain kind of, like, atmosphere to it. You feel... It, it feels better than buying it off a store. Oh, or I agree, because like it is just, oh, thanks for your yeah. transaction, it's continue like shopping, and then you're back. Yeah, it. it's it's kind of like, I'm going there, I'm buying the game. I remember me and my buddy's corner here, because Connor was, uh, he's, well, he'll be about your age, right? 
but he's about maybe 25 in fact and Kieran was my age so we're, we're about three four years younger right um and connor uh, he used to get all his like old xbox 360 games like bioshock and whatnot and he would take them up to the local like a like a local uh, cash what was it it was cash yeah. for cash generators right one of those like kind of cat you know like the ones you could trade yeah. stuff in it like gold and whatnot take them up there trade in the games get a little bit of money back and then you go buy a new one and that's when we bought like this game here borderlands my favorite game and i remember going up there when it first came out you had to buy the dlc and a separate box which was like weird but that was I the era installing that was the era. halo and having two discs to download yeah it was it. weird but that that was the era that we came from right and like i remember it was so cool though playing this entire game getting to level 50 which was a level cap and then the first dlc came out the zombie island of dr ned and having to go up and go trading games to then go and like go and actually like get like a, a, the dlc and then buy it and take it back and then you could go play it. it was it was weird but it was brilliant it was so nostalgic was it in halo 4 where it was like insert disc 2 for online multiplayer and yeah multiplayer like and halo one. Yeah, yeah, it was like on Halo. Same with um, ODST, I'm pretty sure Halo 3 DST. They had like two discs. Mm. I never played one ODST. One I was kind of like a Halo 4 fanboy, and that was kind of it. Yeah. It's funny oh, yeah. to say that about going around your friends and playing different games. Because, like, for me, I remember going, like, my friend was the first one to have a PS2 out of both of us. I used to have the PS1. My first game on that was Toy Story 3. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I my remember God, going around man. my friends and playing Tarzan and The Mummy Returns. And uh, you remember the the I toy? The eye, the toy. eye toy and you'd be there like washing windows and all sorts it's like a playstation camera but you'd interact with it oh yeah you know yeah. of course yeah 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 yeah, my, yeah yeah i know what you're talking about yeah yeah oh my god man it's it's mad the nostalgia game and how much it's changed i i miss it i miss Just it actually feel old. yeah man it does right it makes you oh, boomers like five here, console so. generations we've sat through i know and it's mad to think man but i'm happy to still be a part of it God damn! It just makes me think as well because like my little sister is it has been in existence less time than the Switch has. That's so bizarre. <laughs> but god damn! Dang. Like overall, when it comes to content, we've got a lot of diversity here. And this is when I first looked at your channel. It was the main thing that caught my eye. But when it comes to content creation, I've seen that you like many. Uh, I, I'm butchering this so badly, man. I am. Oh my god, it's hot in here. Yes, but. You've we've all delved into the realm of YouTube Shorts, correct? And for when, when I looked at your channel, I see that there's a vast variety, and they can vary from funny moments, edits, and even unboxings. So, could you tell me what exactly you personally think makes a good YouTube Short? I think it has to be the most randomest thing you can think of. They're always the best. Like I've Do, made one about algorithm does oh. not favour them. <laughs> I've made somewhere me and George are playing Minecraft, and I've cut them from uh, the Survival series, and I'm just saying, George. Um, you, you're a, you're a Jedi, George, or I'm, I'm commenting on. Like, I saw well. this. This is one of the first ones I saw. <laughs> and I, I, just, I think it's such an interesting question, it. just due to the the way the algorithm doesn't really care for it. Because we're on a shorts channel, which is so abysmal sometimes, but sometimes so amazing. It's so bizarre. Mm -hmm. But I love that. I love things that make me laugh. So, with the survival series, I thought there's so many funny moments in this. I've spent time editing and putting it together and thinking, oh, that whole my own clip works there. Uh, it's really hard to do now, I've realised, because I want to bring the survival series back because we took a bit of a break from it. You know, I've, I've changed consoles, I've got to update Minecraft and stuff like that, and move it across to PS5. But they've actually, like, made it even harder to take, you know, clips from places and reuse them. Um, yeah. To use this site where you just you, you pull it off, like, MP3 uh, and then put it into the content. But uh, getting back to the shorts... Um, I like to take bits that I find funny and that would be buried in a 30 minute video and just put them there and say, look, this is why you should watch the video. <laughs> and and this is my kind of like a trailer. Through. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like a trailer. That's what it is. That's a good way of doing it. I think, honestly, some people try and be quite like we, as Joseph said, we have a short channel for the Forgotten Podcast. And the whole idea is we want to upload, you know, three clips like from this episode. There'll be three clips made of like, you know, or three shorts made from this episode that we'll put up on that channel. And it gives people like, again, this like could a be trailer. This could be short right now. How would that be? Imagine, I'm saying. <laughs> but like, it, it's like a little kind of spoiler. It's like, oh, this is what you this is what you can expect in the Shedders episode. This is what you can expect in the Rocky TV episode, etc. And it's nice. But like, the algorithm can be so odd sometimes. I think it's really just, I, I, dare, I dare to say it, but I think it's kind of luck. You know, it's kind of well, like, I you agree just have to win see. There's sometimes it'll be like, I'll upload something and it's like, hey, here's the content I worked on. I made a specific short. I hope it does really well. And it, it does like nothing. But then I'll be like, oh, here's me spinning around in Overwatch. <laughs> and it's like, oh, bro, send this to Susan. It's like, yeah. it's like oh. TikTok, when you're scrolling through a load of different videos. Like, I've never really used the YouTube Shorts app, but I think if you're scrolling through all those videos and then it's just like, you know, a content where you're just saying, oh, check this video out. 
you know yeah you, you say, i've recently oh, had a few words to say about it just scroll past it but if you got the most randomest thing and, and someone says well, what is what is happening there what is yeah that? what is this what is this and then it gets more traction and then the algorithm sort of pushes it i've realized yeah um, it's, it's, it's weird to work with it's the same with tiktok like if you if you make something everyone's already watched and they're gonna skip past it but if you make the most randomest thing or you know trends as well could work but i think the algorithm is very uh it's it's strange compared to the youtube one because yeah youtube itself like the main algorithm is very different to the shorts one Shorts. yeah there's, there's, it's, it's a night and day you're know saying like shorts is kind of accident a lot more luck based because it's whether or not you'll get on the short shelf yeah. as it's called um or and then on youtube it's whether or not you'll get recommended and it's kind of like we were talking about this with vip man the previous guest on and uh, we were kind of discussing the whole the whole point of the algorithm where it's like viewer retention is incredibly important but then viewer click activity is important what they do interaction likes comment there's so much that goes into a normal video or a stream that maybe streams are kind of out the window here on youtube streaming on youtube is not the same as on twitch youtube streaming is very like it's very flawed at the minute there's a lot of fundamental flaws with it that I think they're hopefully apparently in 2022 there's a lot of cool stuff coming to you, uh, YouTube streamers which I've is heard really about cool. a lot of this and it does sound yeah good. it does it look it's we're going to be getting like better moderation tools which I think is just well well overdue uh, the ability the ability to be able to gift memberships which is cool so it's like someone could say oh shit I want to give you 10 memberships to 10 of your subs what a great addition you know it's a long time I'll be doing that Exact very much so, and ability to raid other content creators, and I think that right there is like one of the biggest because like raiding is I so mean, beneficial. It's, it's so ridiculous. like I love to have that kind of atmosphere where like say I see Shed, you know, streaming and I'm about to end, I go, oh, I could raid Shed, and then you know he can raid Rocky, and we could raid, you know raid all these, and it's such a great way to be able to collide audiences. It's, it's phenomenal. But I feel like it's needed because I feel like YouTube hasn't really changed that much in the last like couple of years. Where it's no like, little tweaks here and yeah. That. Well, that's that's why I, I mean I've noticed on Twitch growth on Twitch is phenomenal compared to YouTube. I've been gaining like thirty followers a day on Twitch, which is like phew, like that's I mean compared to you, I don't gain thirty follow thirty subs a day on YouTube with streaming on YouTube. No way. Like even though my my YouTube streams are much more higher quality, I do it with the PC, etc. I go the YouTube bootleg. algorithm is more categorized. Yeah, it's kind of like more where like Twitch they is primarily you. focused on gaming, and on top of that. It's streaming. very good at saying, "Hey, this is this. You might like this." You know, Twitch. As Twitch a... is very straightforward. Twitch tells you, like, "All right, you want to get to the top, get more viewers." I've that, been that, that's it. because I'm just getting into Twitch. Like, I've not really done much Twitch. Uh, yeah. But it's like lately, since I've been multi-streaming, I know you're not supposed to do this on Twitch. If yeah. you're a partner, definitely don't do it. But yeah, yeah. Because I still only have a couple of followers. It's not so bad. Mm. But um, I got like 21 followers today on Twitch and like 70 views. So I'm telling, dude, it's, it's phenomenal, man. There it's for you sit and go like yo why am i doing like i i hate to say it but it kind of makes you kind of it kind of makes you go why the fuck am i doing youtube you know what i mean you kind of say and go what the what i'm doing putting in all this effort and i'm getting YouTube nothing from, and this is a problem permanent though. With, well that's yeah. It, yeah that's the thing it does but you know it's twitch is made for streaming and twitch is the, the best thing about twitch and that's what i kind of do like about it is the fact is it's quite straightforward you want to grow on Twitch, get more viewers. That's it. You'll climb up the ladder. That's all it is. Just get more viewers. That's all it is. And for me, like I've, I've learned that that's easy peasy. That's all it is. I stream with the most bootleg setup and I can gain 30 followers a day. Yeah. Yes. I, I think, get more I views on my VODs than I do on my YouTube like stream. Sorry, I cut you off. Which is like for that alone, that just makes me go, why am I, why am I doing this? It was like, I've been, I've been streaming on YouTube for three years and I'm, I'm like, I'm just not seeing those kind of returns. It's, it's no point on the while on Twitch. It's like, I'm seeing some good stuff. You know? Yeah, I think I think getting back to the shorts on TikTok, I think we're in a, a very new era of social media because like more than ever, just the most, you know, just the most randomest person doing a dance or doing something silly can get to insane levels of, um, you know, growth. Uh, and it's just changed the game completely. But it's like with a short, I'll do a video that's a 30 minute video and take me eight hours to edit and gets 10 views. <laughs> I'm doing sure. We've spoken about this a few times. Up. And it's I like hate ADHD content. Years. And I'm sitting there at work. I'm like, I put that up four hours ago and it's gone from 100 to 300 to 500 to 5,000. I'm like, what is happening? Like, my other video, the one I spent eight hours on, that the professionally made thing is eight hours, five views, 10 views. <laughs> <laughs> I made a video memeing around on Apex, got 50k, uh, and then I made a video that took me about a month to make, got like 120, and it, oh. it, it just goes to show inconsistencies in our It turns for your efforts. If you put in a lot of time and effort into things now, with, with the way the algorithms work for TikTok and Shorts, it's it's very strange, because it's like if you, if you do the silliest thing and it works, if you put in it, like 30 hours, it's, yeah, it's really it, 
It's, it it's all how like behavior. it encourages you to spend less time producing content. Almost, it's kind of like sometimes like short based content or content that is like quick fire. That's what I call it, quick fire content, where it's kind of like, like oh hey you're here, let's, let's stick it here. Ooh, they bag you're gone. That's 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 what gets views, and it's like why. I'm making a proper documentary here. Like this should get some proper. This is like Netflix level. You know what I'm saying? But, like that's the thing. It, it, YouTube's changed so much since 2012. That's I, I know a few content creators that are kind of still stuck in that mentality. That oh let's just do let's plays. Don't. <laughs> YouTube's changed a lot. 2012 you could do let's plays and you could grow phenomenally well. But nowadays people just it's a different era of people. Different that's era of YouTubers hard to gamers. Game and seeing I've noticed that a lot. Yeah, it, it's me, definitely. The biggest change was the 4,000 hours, and I use around at that time as well. Yeah, that but was. I was I, so well, I was I was actually starting to make little bits of money on the content, and then yeah. there was like 4,000 hours, a thousand watch time. At this point, uh, in my channel's evolution, I was getting 10 hours a stream on Minecraft yeah. at that time, and I was thinking I got to a thousand hours. And I was like, this is impossible, and I yeah. gave up. I, I always regret giving up there because I I know now, like over lockdown, I just spent every day on it, and I just. I, I think I've done it in six months, but then it just seemed massive. It's, it's ridiculous, but I think the 4,000 watch hours is just absurd. What's even more absurd is the fact that now YouTube monetizes your content, even if you don't earn money from it, they'll earn money from it. Like, that, the audacity. The, that, like, that annoying, we talked about, I think, episode, what was it, Joseph, episode 20? Uh, Ooh, um, I, I think it's, not, not 16, it was episode 16, it was episode right, 16. With, oh, no, yeah, it was, because no, no, we had that six, discussion. Um, yeah, and it was, about how we were outraged. It. It's such an outrageous saying, the fact, oh, you need to get so many watch hours to get monetization, but we'll monetize your content and earn money off your hard work. Excuse it's, me? It's like I do these fashion shows all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, today it's limited, um, you know, limited monetization. Sometimes this happens, sometimes it doesn't monetize at all. Uh, yeah. At all. But I barely swear my videos are, you know, pretty much PG. Like, yeah. I don't use any copyrighted music, so why limit? <laughs> why limit? Well, it, it doesn't make any sense. Where you, where you upload like 20 or 30 videos and they test, um, you know, how likely you are to get monetized or how monetizable the videos mm -hmm. are. And like every single one of my videos is like perfect, um, and still I get limited monetization on some of my streams, which is is very it's absurd, man. It's, it is. It's very. It is quite weird, man. It's quite absurd. But so that's the point with YouTube. It's just it kind of sucks. I hate to say it. I love YouTube. I love this platform, but I I feel like it was the era that I wanted it to be in, or I wanted it to be. In. I feel like a lot of us here that we all wanted to be a part of is kind of past. You know, yeah, like I mean, we all, I think we all, all of us, yeah, exactly. All of us would have thrived in that original 2012, 2011, 2013, 14 era, 2015, when you could actually It was already something. luck of the draw of when you were born, to be honest. Yeah, well, that, <laughs> that's it. But it's like, it, it's mad how much the platform is kind of sensitize people and like actually make people as well force themselves to do stuff they normally wouldn't do. Like you can't swear anymore on YouTube. You can, but it, it's to an extent. You but can't I, I say what like you want. You can't make videos it against people. It going that way. Like in it's going to ruin it. In a totally put people off it's going to be impossible to make money yeah, yeah that's destroy it destroy this foundation that they've built of you know yeah. social media success and becoming your own boss and you know they, gonna they, they're going to destroy themselves things. i think i think trying to trying to satisfy everybody is what's destroying it like the idea is you know it's like not allowing people to make negative commentary videos i used to watch people like uh, i don't know if you watched them what sorry it's became too mainstream definitely you know that's it yeah, they, they promote all these, you know, TV programs, all these shows, all these everything like that. Jimmy uh, Jimmy Kimmel, whatever it is, you know, Fallon. All these, they, they promote these galore, you know what I'm saying? But they don't pro they promote the actual homegrown creators that have worked for years honing in their craft. And then it, it's another point where it's like, again, they're getting rid of channels like Leafy is here and iDubs and all these other channels. I'll are, be next because I'm yeah, that way, negative uh, commentary uh, channel. Any, any channels that make somewhat negative content towards other channels or people that do deserve it, no, no, you can't be here. You're not allowed to have another opinion in here that isn't positive. Like, I get it to an extent. Bullying is not right, of course, or giving too harsh Bring criticism. It's please. not right. But at the end of the day, there has to be good content and bad content, good guys and bad guys to make the platform thrive. If you just try and make oh, everybody it nice, it's going to be boring. There has to be conflict it. so there can be growth. Well, but I remember like, Keemstar said that. Sorry. It's like the YouTube Rewind, isn't it? It's like they bought yeah. you know, The Rock and everyone and Will Smith and everyone hated it. But then yeah, you go back like... three or four years ago when they did Rewind and everyone loved it because it was all these... PewDiePie, KSI... Don't exa worry, it's exactly. not like they can we can all dislike it anymore. It's fine. That's, yeah, another thing, getting rid of the dislikes. What a what a cheesy thing to do. I mean, I get it. There is there is good reasoning in it, right? Because it's like, yeah, if you're a streamer like others or whatnot or content creators, I dislike seeing... Like, I do dislike seeing the dislikes and whatnot, but to the extent they are quite important. 
dislikes our interaction on the videos regardless, whether it's good or bad, you know, and it doesn't really affect the videos in a negative way, it's only a positive. We talked about this in episode uh, 24, the dislike democracy, but it was one of those things where it's like, um, it does suck, like, they, they, they're continuously, I feel like, worsening the platform. And it makes it really, it makes it really sad for creators like us who are all, I feel like we're, we're so, we, like we have all the potential to become really big upcoming content creators, but we're not getting given that door. If they just gave us that little extra hand, we could go to the next level. You know what I mean? It'd be fantastic. Even with removing the dislike button, now you have a big sign saying dislike underneath the video. Like why put that there? People know where the dislike button is. <laughs> Even oh, it, it was, exactly. Button. And then, then they said, oh, it's to help, you know, create mental health. <laughs> That's an interesting way of putting that. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. It's to help create our mental health, but that we're hiding the dislike from everybody who isn't the creator, but we're still going to show the creator the dislikes if they go into the YouTube studio. Yeah. What is the. Just leave it there. I feel like we've, got, we've got used to it, though. We've got used to the dislikes. Yeah. There's a lot of trollers there. Yeah, Whether but you get used to people, it. You know, if you're, if you're a good person and enjoy the content, then yeah. we'll stream. You know what the video is. That's, that's exactly it. But it, it's like, it's still it's such a redundant statement. They, they, they legit contradicted themselves on the same point. It's to help the creator mental health by not letting them see it on their channel. But what about, you what are about letting them see it like, privately. What about things like Infinite Warfare, like the trailer? That got the, like yeah. the multiple dislikes. That, that is, that, I think that's, it's mainly because of these big companies opinion. that they do this. Like, it, what was it? Nintendo brought out, I, I, I'm, I'm not a Nintendo player. Some of you guys might know better than me here, but there was like a Nintendo expansion pack or something online. You guys hear about that? What was it? Oh no, I think it was because they started making it. You had to pay for online. Yeah, it was like no, it was it was it was, it was it was a recent thing that came out. The Nintendo Online Expansion Pack. We Google it. Yeah, it was yeah the Switch. It was like a Nintendo I'll Switch it, Online I'll Expansion Pack. If you give it a Google, and basically got like everybody hated it because people were like this. People were like this is outrageous. This is terrible. So they disliked it. <laughs> because it's bad and then like uh, yeah no no they can't see that. So yay, it's a good video. Like no, it isn't. It's a really bad thing. It, it's good when we can give it. People aren't going to know when they're being, you know, catfish into buying yeah. these, into buying these. Products. Yeah, because now you can't have a disliked opinion. You know say, or if you can, it, that's it. You're not going to get seen because they can just delete the comments. They couldn't delete the dislikes before unless they hide the ratings. And if they do that, that's a massive red flag. But I've never really, I've never really minded people disliking. Like, Same, if, yeah. if they don't like the content, then dislike. If there's a genuine reason. If they're just yeah. trying to like on 20, 30 accounts just to, just yeah. to annoy you. It's just, it, that's just immature and trolling. But like at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it, it gives you more views. It gives you, yeah, you know, more interaction, helpful. which is interesting. Joseph, do you want me to add that to the screen? It's the same with the fashion show. Like when people come in. If you want to. They're just giving me more views on the video. Here it is here. Because um, if I have Nintendo, a look, so, let, let me, let me yeah, read. All right, all right, oh, okay, my, go, go, go. Okay. Mario's hair. I know, it's beautiful, you're saying. But yeah, it says Nintendo Switch Online, what was it? Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack price shocks players. Nintendo has revealed the price of the Nintendo Switch Online Plus expansion pack and fans aren't happy with the surprise and price difference. It says Nintendo has revealed the price of the Nintendo Switch Online Plus expansion pack service shocking fans with many believing it is surprisingly high price tag uh, was a surprisingly high price tag nintendo switch online is a requirement for those who play at multiplayer games on the console and the original subscription was widely considered to uh, offer fair value but many believe the new service price is simply too much for what's included 3.99 a month or so, wait sorry wait a month oh my god wait 90 for 12 it used months. to be 3.99 and it, well it used to be free and then went to 3.99 now 7.99 and it just sucked because when it was free you had access to super mario kart online um basically all of splatoon 2 um, because right. like, it was primarily an online game, but mm -hmm. then they were told, oh, to play the game that you really like, you now have to pay seven ninety nine a month, which is scummy as it is. And yeah. uh, you would then get access to like the, the SNES and the NES um, old games. Like, you'd get them all for free. If you, well, not for free, you should be paying a subscription. But it, it's all too much for games that came out, you know what, a good few decades ago. <laughs> yeah. On top of being stripped of your already, you know, existing privileges. It's a bit absurd, man. It's it's, it's entirely absurd, I mean, but that's that's it. I think if they remaster them and they gave enough value for money, I think then it's, it's fair. Mm. I think people who buy the Switch are not used to paying for a monthly membership um, because obviously people who own a PlayStation, like since PS4, we've you know you obviously have to buy online and yeah, but see with that Xbox enough value for your money. If you're not getting any value, then that's that's the problem. So mm. I think yeah. It's also, it's also just the way the console works as well. It's kind of a struggle when it comes to this sort of system. Like, I own a Switch. I don't play my Switch that much anymore. Like, really rarely. Um, Lucy's got one. I've got one. We only ever time we really play online was, like, when it was free. But, but now yeah. it's not free. I don't play it that much. I'm not going to pay for it. 
you know no. so now my switch lives at her house because you can play for free locally like you can connect oh. in the same room for free mm. so it just kind of sucks though because it's kind of like well if i want to play i have to pay or go over yeah you know? and it kind of it kind of drives players away a little bit which is kind of like you're, oh, you're driving an audience of people away from your co yeah, your community especially where the prime life. demographic of nintendo is children yeah, what I've families. noticed about Nintendo though is after I got you know into the Wii and the DS and stuff lately because I, I yeah. don't have those consoles growing up, but you know I looked at all these classic games and Nintendo is, is one of those brands that keeps remaking the same games and repackaging yeah. them every generation. It, it mm. reminds me, this is another controversial thing, and I I hate it as well because I bought it, but they released a Mario 3D I think like 30 year anniversary thing. And it was essentially you got Mario Galaxy 2, uh, no, Mario Galaxy 1, not even 2, um, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, Super Mario Sunshine and Mario, uh, Super Mario 3D Land, I think it is. Uh, I no, it's, oh, what's it called? Mario 64, that one, I played that as well. Uh, it comes as a big bundle thing and you think, oh, it's the 30th year anniversary of 3D Mario. Uh, it would be a really good update, you know, it'd be a really good thing you can purchase and all that. But, yeah. You know, it, it only comes to the games, which is kind of like for like 60, 70 quid. Uh, these games have been out for a while. There's nothing new. There's no um, it's extra a lot stuff. To there's not it's even any pay. like previewable items. Like, you know, when you get like a a, um, a special edition, it's like you can get like things to look at, things to mm -hmm. read, etc. Things to read at the bare minimum. And what we got was things to read, but they were like postcards. And it's like, I don't want to read this if I paid no, 70 no. quid and have three games that I've played before like four times. It, it's just one of those things where it's like, man, you could be doing so much more for a multi-billion like, money company, um, especially Nintendo. And for some reason, they also made it so this special edition £70 offer was limited time. You, oh, you, so you had to. Are you, yeah, you had to, you had to get forced to. So, it sucks, man. It's a modern game. That's what I remember. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, I remember the act man saying this. And it was a really great quote and it was modern gaming. This is this is the era of gaming that we're all in, you know. Microtransactions, buying like skins, with my credit buying card. everything, supply drops, etc. There's no longer an era where you get a game that's a full game. It's a game that's been chopped up into little bits, and then you have to buy all the bits of the game if you want to play it. I feel like it's you're reading all my scripts. That's <laughs> it's what it is. But you're saying, but right, we'll get on to the final question right now, Shadow. All right, because we've kept you for long enough, bro. But it's been a pleasure having you on. All right. So let's go right here for the final. And hopefully I can come back in a year or two. And, I know. was hoping, bro. It'd be fantastic to get you on, man, later down the line. You know what I'm saying? It'd be amazing, bro. So for our final question with you, Shedwards, we wanted to mention how this January 1st will mark the seven-year anniversary of your YouTube channel, which is a huge thing, obviously, man. Seven years on the platform. It's so insane to believe it's went that fast. And I'm sure for you, it kind of just feels like yesterday that you officially made the channel and then here you are now. But with that in mind, we wanted to ask what your plans are for the future of the Shed Wars channel and Shedcast as well. Uh, so my future, hmm, my plans for the future of Shedcast is to just keep, you know, cracking out content, try and produce as much as possible. Maybe get more guests in and do more like movie night sort of stuff. Um, but I think that's going to take a backseat for a little while while I try and focus on my content. Try and maybe do like, you know, one a month, something like that. Yeah. Um, and the Shedwars channel, I'm just going to go full steam ahead and just keep, you know, keep chugging out content. Um, you know, maybe later down the line, maybe switch it up a bit with different things, maybe more unboxings and more different kinds of things. But at the moment, I'm just enjoying, you know, making the videos and just keep putting out stuff. <laughs> I don't really have any immediate plans. Um, <laughs> I know like last month, like I did a whole rebranding of the channel. I really sat down and I was like, oh, what do I want to do? I want to, I want to give it a fresh new look and a fresh new feel, you know, for the seventh anniversary and, yeah, you know, hitting 3k subs. Um, and, but immediate plans, I don't really know. Yeah, I'm still in the, still in the, still in the planning phase. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, man. Yeah. You've had, in all fairness, man, you've had a very busy past fortnight. You know what I'm saying, man? The past two weeks have been incredibly busy, man. Becoming a father, dude. You know what I'm saying? Entering this new era of your life. Just of minor course, things man. like that, you know? I don't, <laughs> just, just minor things, you know what I'm saying? But no, man, honestly, bro, we, we really just want to say, man, thank you, honestly, dude, so much for coming on the show, man. It was a absolute treasure and pleasure having you on, man, honestly, dude. And it meant a lot to us. We know that this is a little bit more into your own personal time, and I'm sorry about that. I do apologize to Abby. Please do tell her. We're so sorry, man. Uh, and of course, baby Leo as well, obviously, Link man. But honestly, dude. 
we'll link of the podcast. We'll get you on the, on the Shagcast, Joe, and we'll have to Bro, come on. We, we both love to come on individually, then maybe together, you never know, maybe, uh, maybe, for, maybe some foreshadowing here for a future podcast collaboration. I love that. It's not say too much right now, peeps. Lips, uh, you know, lips shut. You know, loose lips, they, they sink ships. But man, Shedward, honestly, bro, it was a pleasure to have you on, man. You've been an absolute, utterly really fantastic yeah, guest, bro. And I wish you, I, I, I wish you the absolute best in the future with with your family, man. Now, obviously, of course, bro, with Abby, with Leo, with your parents, with your, your siblings, everything, man. With, of course, your channel as well and with work. And dude, again, man, thank you so much for being on, man. And again, congratulations, bro, from both of us and from the audience listening on becoming a father, man. Honestly, bro, it's an amazing oh, thing, man. Awesome. Me. Man, it was an absolute pleasure, man. A treasure. Ladies and gentlemen, check my boy Shedwards right now. His channel will be linked down below. Plus, you can click it in the title if you're watching on Spotify. It'll also be in the description of this episode. Thank you all so much for watching, guys. We really hope you enjoyed episode 26 of the Forgotten Podcast. Only one week till Christmas, which means one more episode coming on Christmas Day. But Shedwards, once again, thank you for coming on, bro. It's been a fantastic episode, man. Go check out Shedwards' channel and Shedcast. He's got an amazing podcast. And you never know, you might just see us all there one day in the future. We'll see what happens, guys. Much love to you all. Thank you for watching this episode. See you later. Bye, right, everyone. And that wraps up Skitty. the second episode of the Christmas trilogy. So, just all the different cameras. I think Joseph might be frozen. I, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Joseph. It's two, it's two Joes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Joe and Joe. That's it. the double Joes. I, except I'm the better one. That's what it is. But don't tell Joseph I told you that. You, you will disagree. Joe, man, I think you've had uh, some technical difficulties. You good, man? <laughs> I love how this is going to be in the editing. He's going to be the one editing this. So we're going to be sitting here memeing him and he's going to have to zoom in on his face just like this. Oh, he left. No. Oh, yeah. Do the thumbnail stuff and the script stuff <clears throat> and arranging guests and whatnot. Sorry, my throat. <clears throat> but Joseph, he does the editing because that's more his kind of division. He's better at that. Um, but he, he normally likes to zoom in on the faces and mess around. And like, he's really good at that. I can't lie. He's brilliant with it. But like, um, yeah, no, I, I know he's going to have a field day doing this one. That's why I'm so excited for him. I'm like, yo, I got, I'm just going to let him edit all the way through. It'll be fantastic. I said, we're recording right now. We've got the recording going, but it's fine. It's, it's all good. It'll take its time. But I don't know where the hell he is. He should have jumped back in right now.